The 2021 Perfect Game All-American Classic is brought to you by Rawlings, the number one glove of pro players and the official baseball glove of Major League Baseball, Rawlings. And by Perfect Game, the largest and most respected independent scouting service in baseball. Wish you were here. I mean, we've been having a blast all week long. Beautiful Petco Park and certainly enjoying our stay here. Perfect game, All-American Classic. Let's get it on down to Danny Wexelman talking with those two talented players, Drew and Tamar. Danny, take it away. Darren, thank you so much. I have two Georgia boys representing the East team, Tamar Johnson and Drew Jones. Tamar, let's start with the East team. What makes your squad so special the energy is at 11 all the time of course you know we're amazing you know we got a lot of great guys you know the top the top of the job class is made up of these players you know so you know it's amazing just to have these guys and we we bond together you know we have fun and we we cheer each other on so that's what makes us so great great play and you guys look really good as well the draft class 2022 drew is second to none tell me what makes you so proud of your class uh, it's the best class, you know, we work as a family, work as a union, everybody's rooting for each other all the time, so just to be out here with all these guys and everybody has special talent top to bottom, so. We heard you guys all week long. It's been a little chippy, Tamar, been a little chippy. What makes the East team the team to be today? You know, we're the best guys, hands down, and, and I stand by that for sure. You know, we got the best left-handed pitchers, the best right-handed pitchers, the best hitters in, in the class. So, you know, we're best. We're, de we're definitely the team to beat since we have the best guys. Drew, you earned the Rawlings Gold Glove Award at our banquet for Perfect Game. Why is that award so special to you? It means a lot. Uh, my dad won 10 of them, so just started getting a good head start in high school with one means I only got nine more left. But um, it means a lot. I pride myself on my defense most of the time, and just being able to accept that award meant a lot to me. All right, the Georgia boys representing the East team. Darren, back to you. Incredible stuff, Danny. We'll see. Either one of those players could be high draft picks next year. At last year's game, Khalil Watson was a man who was added very last to the roster. And then heading into this year's draft, the young man out of North Carolina allowed us to come into his home to experience draft day with him, the perfect game style. Here it is behind the scenes with Khalil Watson. Ever since I was little, I always had the dream of just playing, going into the draft process as I am in now. Me and my brother just used to talk about it and talk about it and just talk about it. Then next thing you know, dream coming true. It hasn't kicked in yet. Hopefully it'll kick in later on tonight when I, my name get called. You know, you gotta enjoy this day because it's the draft day. You only get one opportunity right here, so you might as well enjoy it. Khalil Watson Khalil. is so fun to watch. One of the uh, better shortstops in this draft. I'm in love with the twitch. I'm in love with the swing. I think Khalil Watson could end up going maybe even number one. Watson, the son of LaTanya and Charles, and a young man who's at Wake Forest High School. Well, Watson is a guy, too, that, like like you said, wasn't on the national radar. He was named an All-American, and he didn't stop. Nothing different, really, but it's just an exciting day for me, uh, my family and everything. So, shoot, for real, for it's a dream come true if I hear my name tonight. But I know I'm going to hear my name tonight, but shoot, it's a different feeling. I barely slept last night. So we're about to do a little workout uh, that I normally do almost every day. Go to Wake Forest High School where I play ball right across the street. Baseball is just really what I love, and I can, I have passion for baseball. Uh, it runs in the family. I just got off the phone this morning with my advisor agent, and he told me the whole spiel and stuff and telling me which route that each pick got and who is it going to take. So the first, first pick, I might fall up in there. But one thing you know, they trying to – Devaluate their slot value. So at the same time, like if they want me and I can get what I need, I'm good. Today is the day that we've been all been working, that men have been working for ever since he was at the age of five. We're gonna see come seven o'clock what the good Lord bring us.
first pick of the 2021 MLB Draft, the Pittsburgh Pirates select Henry Davis. The Texas Rangers select Jack Leiter. The Baltimore Orioles select Colton Kowser. The Arizona Diamondbacks select Jordan Waller. So every year this happens where they, they get less money early on and then they spend it later on. They're trying to do a two-for-one deal. Serve the show. For real, for they might make me go to college, boy. I could have been picked. But they wanted me like four mil below the slot. With the 16th pick of the 2021 MLB draft, the Miami Marlins select Khalil Watson, a shortstop from Wake Forest High School, Wake Forest, North Carolina. You just don't know, bro. I'm feeling so good right now. This is unbelievable. What an incredible story, and these young men will experience something very similar next year, and we look forward to going into their homes. Again, thank you to Khalil Watson. Marcelo Meyer, also a very high pick, opened up his home, a San Diego native, and it certainly was an honor to be behind the scenes. And again, for a lot of these athletes, we, with Perfect Game, start seeing these players at 12 and 13 years old, so we get to know them very, very well. Clint Hurdle on one side, Luis Gonzalez on the other. These are the managers of the Perfect Game All-American Classic first pitch. The lineups, you'll meet them all in a moment.
is the chance to be close to these players. Hunter, you heard the energy, and again, you've gotten to know them throughout this week. When you see a piece like that that's so beautifully done by a production team, what are your thoughts as someone who played with that kind of energy and that kind of passion? As a younger player, too, you're not too far away from playing, man. It's very exciting, and, and it's fun to see the personalities of these young players. The, some of them know each other from travel ball and this, that, and the other, but East versus West, it's exciting. It's parts of the country. We talk about it in, in, all, of the, you know, in all of your teams and in, in, in pro baseball, so it's fun to watch these two sides compete. David, again, the confidence it comes from the ability. As you've seen three decades worth of high school classes, where is this one? I know you've already told the viewers arms are here, but how will they impact the draft next year? Oh, it's going to be a big thing because I think teams have gotten away from high school pitching as analytics has taken over, but I think the pitchers are just going to be too good next year. There's going to be too many guys who not only throw mid-90s, but they have the secondary pitches, and I think that's going to be a theme that we're going to be able to develop today. Just not the velocity. We're going to develop the change-up, the slider, the curveball theme, and throwing them for strikes as well. One of the other themes you will see in this game is you'll see Trevor Hoffman pop around. Trevor Hoffman is uh, the host to this game, and it's his efforts here in this ballpark that have made everyone feel at home. It's his leadership. He's standing by Dylan Lesko, who was a top fundraiser. Dusty Jaquins, the CEO in that good-looking orange shirt, standing to his left, up top chops, the title sponsor of the Perfect Game All-American Classic. And uh, in that group, uh, a young, a little bit smaller All-American. He's not a player out front out there, but a young man who they all got to know by the name of Carter Santos. He beat cancer in Rady Children's Hospital. Hey, Carter, you are a hero, man. All these, uh, Hunter, all these athletes loved being around Carter, and they were inspired by his, you know, just battle and defeating cancer. I think it inspires all of us to, you know, to have that spirit, that that comeback spirit, to come out, throw the first pitch. Uh, you, you heard all of the the players just really get, uh, um, you know, emotional and get into him coming out and throwing that first pitch. It gets you excited, gets you pumped up, and we're all on the same team when it comes to that. Nice job, Carter. Excellent stuff. His mom, Nicole, shared a great story. Look at Trevor Hoff. I mean, he just embodies San Diego. Karsten Sabathia, the son of CC Sabathia, the other top fundraiser for Perfect Game Cares and for Rady Children's Hospital. This event, too, David, I think for scouts, if you're a scout, I want to I want to have you put that hat on. And okay, you've sat down. It's destination viewing. You you are making sure that let's say you live in Virginia and you're a scout for the Nationals. What do you what do you see in this game? I'm, it's an all-star game. Pitchers are going to maybe blow a lot of hitters away. But what are you scouting in this game? And what you're seeing is the best versus the best. You're going to have the 19 best pitchers in the country facing the 37 or whatever it is top hitters in the country. And you want to see these individual matchups. The the players sort of made light of it right there at the beginning. But that's from a scouting per perspective. That's what you're looking at is the pitcher versus the hitter matchups. What are you most excited to see? Each and every week we host a college baseball show. So we talk, you and I, Hunter, to college athletes and coaches all the time. You've really dove deep back into that space over the last year. So tonight, what are you looking to see? in this game there's so much i'm excited to see first and foremost is how polished players are these days the young players are so much more talented than they were when i was a kid uh, there's more information there's more workouts there's more science behind everything but i want to see your body language i want to see your attitude i want to see how do you command the batter's box how patient are you how do you command the pitcher's mound how do you play on defense so i want to see if i was a scout and i was looking to draft or i'm rooting for my team to pick up a player i want to see how they carry themselves and get deep into this is the biggest stage how do, how's your heartbeat how do you you handle it Dylan Lesko goes to work he does so against that West starting lineup with some interesting names at the very top you remember Carl Crawford out of Las Vegas Nevada there's Justin Jackson Holiday, the son of Matt Holiday. Jason Jones Hunter talked about him coming on the air I'm proud to watch Gavin Turley just about every weekend I'm in Arizona and catcher Malcolm Morse going to Stanford Dom Helm and huge power Schubart killing out of Wisconsin Mikey Romero you know the Romero sisters by the way the legendary softballers, that's the baseball version. He is the younger brother. Caden Martin, Carson Sabathia. David, they hit 11. That's kind of showcase style, right? That's showcase style. You want to get more hitters into the game. It's the same thing that happens at PG tournaments. We not only have a designated hitter, we have an extra hitter. It's just to get more kids in the lineup. Dylan Lesko's from Buford, Georgia. Buford High School. Stuart Chester is his high school coach. He is a Vanderbilt commit, and he is the son of Corey. And Sean is his stepmom, and Caitlin is his mom. And, or I should say, is his sis. Beck is his mom. So congratulations. A lot of love around Dylan Lesko, all of them. 
celebrating him tonight. This is the Gatorade 20 and 21 National Baseball Player of the Year. David, he's a 4.0 in the classroom, heavy volunteering. And who does he love? I mean, who does he really love to watch? How about Walker Bueller and Zach Greinke? He learns from both of them. Lesko is on the mound. And when you think of these guys, David, give me some perspective. Well, these are the be- these aren't the best big league pitchers ever who've gone to perfect game. These are the best when they were pitching in perfect game events. I think Dylan Lesko's right at the top of that company of goats. Got Kumar Rocker, Hunter Green, of course, who's throwing 103 in the AAA in the red system. The late Jose Fernandez and one of my favorites, Scotty Casimir. But these are all pitchers who dominated with quality stuff when they were at PG. Dylan Lesko may be the most dominant of them. Justin Crawford will lead things off. Crawford, he's another one that has become, I guess you'd say, David talked about a rising pitcher. He's become a rising hitter. His stock going very high. He's out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Bishop Gorman and Gino DeMaria is his coach. Plays for CBA. John Pano runs that travel team. Carl Crawford is dad. Amy Freeman is his mom. And Carl Crawford, very important in the history of perfect game. He went through the, was really one of the first young superstars back in the, in the formative days of perfect game. So a player dad that we've always held a very soft spot for in the perfect game hearts. First pitch of fastball that dots the outside corner at 95 miles an hour. Owen won the count to Justin Crawford. And the thing we I think we're going to see out of Dylan Lesko from the get-go is fastball command. The National Showcase, his first 12 fastballs were all strikes. And, Hunter, you know how it is important. If you could, a pitcher can get ahead with his fastball, that opens up the hole at bat. It's very important, and it's important to have confidence to throw your fastball in the zone, and he just did right there, three of them in a row. 95, 96, and 96, 1, 2, 3. One thing I find... Ooh, man, he that, he missed that up quite a bit. But that's a good short swing. He had a chance. Just got to get on top. Some some of these guys, it looks like Lesko's ball almost rises because his release point is so low. Out of Stillwater, Oklahoma, this is Jackson Holiday. Scorpions his travel team as he takes a fastball in. He's an Oklahoma State commit where he'll play for his uncle. And certainly a baseball family. We loved watching Matt play. But Hunter, he's a different type player. This is uh, a guy a little smaller in frame, lean, athletic. Dad was a big bruiser from the right side. This is a skillsy, toolsy, left-handed hitter. Yeah, it's definitely a different body frame than you expect from uh, Matt Holliday. This is a, was an absolute beast. I think it's so exciting. We have so many, uh, you know, you know, family major leaguers right now with Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette, Fernando Tatis Jr., and now we're seeing uh, more of the the family that we started with Crawford and we're going into Holiday. There's so many, there's six of them that are former major league families, so this is pretty exciting to watch their kids play. Yeah, and, and you can tell with with the Jackson Holiday and the others that they've been around ballparks so much, and, you know, the genetics matter, but just being raised in ballparks is important. On the ground, rolled out to the right side, that is gobbled up. On that right side by Nas Mule out of New Jersey. We talk about, uh, this is crazy, David. I mean, this is, we talked about this last night. The, the Jones name, Crawford Holiday. You'll see Sabathia and Mason McGuire, who's a pitcher who pitched in game one of this series of games on Friday night. Yeah, that's just so impressive with the All-Stars. Also had the six-member uh, big leaguer whose son is playing this is Luke Collier, dad, Cam Collier, the son. So there's six sons of big leaguers here. Jason Jones takes his chance now. Braswell High School, the Texan, slightly closed stance, and a changeup dives under his hands for strike one. Now, that was a predictable. You saw in the opening that, that Dylan and Jason were going to go for each other. For Lesko to break out a first pitch changeup, almost unfair. That was rude. <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, all the fastball confidence, first pitch changeup, chain backs it up. Have some fun. Have some fun. And then you're the one who said you love Jason Jones, you know, aggressiveness and all. When you see two straight change-ups, now how can you be aggressive as a hitter? He's got a battle, but look at his presence. He's he's definitely all over the strike zone. He's not backing down. Uh, I just like his balance. He looks ready on time. Look, fighting that off. Foul ball. That's a tough pitch right there. This is one of the most electric arms. We're watching a 97 explosive, uh, kind of one of those uh, – what is, what is the spin rate, the vertical axis? It's tough to get on top of that ball, so uh, I, I like his presence right now. Jason is the son of Tim and Kim. Dad played Division One baseball, was drafted, played a little bit professionally. Mom, a Division One basketball player. J.J. 
as he is known. His travel team, the famed Dallas Tigers. They, of course, produced Clayton Kershaw. You've heard that name. And a breaking ball. Outside Woo. corner, strike three. Young man touches 97, and his most fun pitches to watch were a couple of change-ups and a curveball. Go figure it out. PG All-American Classic. So one pitcher touches 97 with his top fastball, and then another goes back to work and does so for the West squad. He's out of Michigan. His name is Brock Porter. And oh, what a lineup he will deal with. And there are the top-ranked young men in that lineup with Andrew Jones at the top, Tamar Johnson, Elijah Green. That's 3-2-1, 1-2-3 in the rankings. Paxton Kling out of Pennsylvania. Roman Anthony homered in the scrimmage. Cam Collier just reclassified if you look on down the lineup. Luke Heyman talented catcher Floridian working behind the plate Brock Porter on the mound Milford Michigan Orchard Lake St. Mary's Canes National his travel team as the first pitch dives down and in 1-0 the count he's the son of Michelle and Todd and the younger brother of Peyton who is 20 years old big sis and he pours a fastball in there at 95 miles an hour well, in Brock Porter, you're going to see two, two different things. You're going to see the power of the fastball. He's up to 97 at the PG National Showcase. He touched 100 um, this spring, pitching in high school. So the arm strength's there. But his second best pitch, just like Dylan Lesko, is his changeup. It's not a firm, lively changeup like Lesko's. It's a minus 20 changeup off the fastball. Drew Jones puts it on the ground, hustling up the line, racing up the line. And Andrew has a base hit. The Vanderbilt commit out of Wesleyan High School in Georgia and the son of Gold Glover winner just about every single year, Andrew Jones and Nicole, his mom. Nothing you could do with this one, Hunter. Yeah, that's uh, speed doesn't slump is, uh, is something we used to say. Uh, put the ball on the ground and, and, and fly, and it just kind of caught a couple extra steps there and takes advantage. So Porter with the base runner to deal with right out of the gates and wearing number 42 and proud of it is Jamar Johnson. Johnson, the winner of the home run derby earlier today. Explosive hitter in that frame as the fastball is outside at 96 miles an hour. 1-0 the count to the young man out of Atlanta, Georgia. East Cobb Astros, his travel team. Kim and Terry are mom and dad. And they're all baseball players, all his brothers. Turvant, Terenz, Turvell, mom ran track in college, dad. A baseball coach played football as well. And by the way, guys, as great as he is, he's a 4.2. That 42 honors Jackie Robinson. That also is his GPA, 4.2. I want to ask David, would, would, where would you compare his barrel control? Because it just looks like he's got one of the smoothest swings, kind of a Garrett Anderson, Ken Griffey Jr. type swing. Where would you, where would you compare that? The barrel control is very high. I think it's more he, he's always on time. 
He, he's a rhythm hitter. You see he's real busy there with the barrel, but just like a, a Gary Sheffield, some of the busy big league hitters, they have the rhythm to their swing, and he's always on time coming out of that, that busy load. There's such great rhythm there, and I think that leads to the barrel control. He's played internationally as well, played with the USA national team in Carmen, Mexico, as he comes up empty that time. 3-1 aggressive cut trying to drive the baseball. Porter pretty much just going with the fastball so far, 94-97. One thing I'm a fan of that's it's tough to do is, like, the early leg kick. And I know it's a big leg kick and people will dissuade it, but some of the new tech is, like, that you're more athletic. and But it has to be early. He's really on time with his leg kick. Fastball gets it right by him at 95 miles an hour. Johnson goes down on strikes that time. Yeah, and if you're if you're expecting a game with slow, with low number of strikeouts, you've turned to the wrong channel. There will be strikeouts this game. The pitcher's stuff is so good, but these hitters are up there trying to do something. They're going to get one or two at most three at bats, and they're going up taking their hats. Here is the talented Elijah Green at IMG Academy. Was Green such a, a pleasure to watch, and he goes to work. Line drive into left center field. It is down. That Eric Green playing for so long and so well with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Elijah Green with a base hit. A little bit of noise off that bat. He turned around mid-90s. A little bit of noise, a lot of noise. Got a fastball right where he wanted it and just crushed it. Love to hear the exit velocity on that one. You definitely got to see the speed here. We get to we get to watch him get a double. You like the hustle as he's pointing to the dugout <laughs> and hitting a double. <laughs> but hey, he's 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 fired up. He's pumping the forearm, showing off the muscles, and uh, yeah, we got to see a barrel right there. Paxton Kling takes the opportunity with a couple of base runners out there out of Roaring Spring, Pennsylvania. Canes National, his travel team. This is an LSU commit, and the son of Craig and Beth, Pennsylvania High School Player of the Year in 2021. This is a player who's LSU committed and then backed off when they made a coaching change. So he's an available player. I think I may have said LSU, and he was originally as a young man. He's getting to know Jay Johnson, his words to me, over the last couple of weeks when he came on our national radio show. Interesting. You have Tamar Johnson available. You have this man, David, now available. And I think these players know that, you know, they're very likely, especially in Tamar's case, to get a chance to play pro ball. They've got decisions. They can probably play for anywhere in the anyone in the country, but especially with Termar's grades. Um, so it's just there's no reason to commit too early for this type of player, basically. Now, David, how often do these guys see this type of velocity? Uh, are they playing in tournaments where they see 95 regularly? Because it's a different animal. I wouldn't say regularly. As Kling lifts that to the middle of the field. Justin Crawford is there. He makes the play. Fires it toward the plate. Not in time. With a head first slide, Andrew Jones come on down. Elijah Green moves all the way over to third. Sack fly, RBI. Play was made out there in center field by Justin Crawford. And to continue your point, Hunter, um, 95 it's just not for players in, in, in pitching the All-American Classic. There's, there are dozens of pitchers around the country who are throwing 95 who aren't here in San Diego. So is it common? Absolutely not. But it used to be that you know 90 was the what you wanted to hit. Now maybe 94, 95 is what you want to hit to put yourself on the map. Velocity has done the same thing at this level as it has at the big league level. This is Roman Anthony from the left side, and a changeup has him drifting out front from mid-90s to 78 miles an hour. Roman's out of... Parkland, Florida, Stoneman Douglas High School. Todd Fitzgerald, a well-known head coach at the high school level, his main man. He's an Ole Miss commit. Another changeup flutters wide. He's the son of Lori and Tony, and Anthony wowed everyone in the exhibition scrimmage the other night by hitting one over the boards at the University of San Diego. He had something interesting happen, Hunter. I'd love for you to reflect. He played in the high school All-American game before the All-Star game in Colorado. Struck out in his first four at-bats and then homered in his fifth. 
Well, it looks like he's he's definitely taking a swing to take you deep. He's not lacking confidence, but uh, you know if he gets a hold of one, it looks like he can get a hold of one at any time. He's always dangerous. Yeah, that's a good looking changeup. He he was respecting the danger that Hunter was talking about. Roman Anthony, we're underway. The 2021 Perfect Game All-American Classic is brought to you by New Balance Baseball, proud partner of the Perfect Game All-American Classic, and by G4. Baseball guards so comfortable, you'll forget they're even there. Stay in the zone. Make your moment, and G4 baseball guards, G4, made for the moment. And by Top Chops. Play hard, chew easy. Top Chops. Gavin Turley to lead things off, a young man out of Arizona. He is in the left field spot to start things. And get to know Jackson Ferris. As far as left-handers go, he's right at the top of the list. An old Miss commit, plays for the Canes national team. Fires a fastball, low and inside, 95 miles an hour. Jackson out of Mount Airy, North Carolina. And that one in off the plate. But got a generous call. Lena is mom. Jason is dad. Bro is Spencer. Jackson Ferris on the mound. And he's working against Turley. Oh, what a breaking ball, but it dives low. Turley, a talented young man out of Chandler, Arizona, Hamilton High School. BPA is travel team. Jared Sandler runs that team. He's an Oregon State commit. Goes up on that toe and takes a fastball in. Three and one the count. What do you have for me on Turley? Well, Tur well, first of all, the tools. He, he's my Benny's Award winner, named after Benny Montgomery because the tools are just extreme. 6'2'9 runner, throws 97 from the outfield, was the runner up in the uh, home run derby. So you know the bat speed and power is there. But, Hunter, we were talking about leg raises last inning and rhythm in his swing. My one issue with Gavin Turley is that he changes his swing, his front leg load, it seems like almost every pitch at times. And it's hard to get that rhythm. Um, as a hitter, and I think he's best when he doesn't do anything. I could, I, don't, I could almost call his home runs in the home run derby by what his front foot was doing, not by what his barrel was doing. Well, we're watching him. He's trying to put the foot down early. You can tell he's, he's working on it. It's one of those things you just got to keep practicing because unconsciously, I, I used to do this. They used to try to force me to put my foot down. It was like a big craze whenever I was uh, in high school. And I would put my foot down, and I would think it stayed down, and I would step again. Watch, foot down, step again. He does it. That's unconscious. That's a tough pitch. Pretty nasty yeah. right there. Good, good spot. 94 miles an hour. It's called a strike, upper tier of the strike zone. So Jackson Ferris. In the world of the modern high strike, right there just below the letters, you'll see that called the big leagues as well now. Well, first you saw breaking ball there, 79, but he is primarily a fastball pitcher, 94, 96, 
very steadily. He was IMG's number one starter this year as a junior and pitched in all their big games, went 8-0 and and just, and just dominated some of the best high school teams in the country. Meet Malcolm Moore, and the breaking ball has him diving out of the way. Malcolm is a stand for commit. There is a brain inside that head on the shoulders that is second to none, but he can flat catch as well. Malcolm, the son of Billy and Tracy and the brother of Wilson. Wilson is 20 years old, but we've really enjoyed this Sacramento, California native with the slightly open stance as that one is dotted over the outside corner. 4.5 GPA. Dave Esker excited to get him to campus if he makes it there and isn't drafted too high. Excited to get him to Stanford. Well, Moore is the number one ranked catcher in the 2022 class, and it's really for a combination of his defense and his offense, but just an outstanding uh, hitter as well as a catcher, and especially a left-handed hitting catcher. Hunter, you know how rare left-handed hitting catchers are in the big leagues. Yeah, getting getting a good hitting catcher in the big leagues is is ab absolutely rare, uh, but getting one that can play defense is the most important. But he's got a great swing here. This is a tough call right here to face left-handed Ferris throwing bullets at your head, and you said he's got a lot in there. He can he's got the duck mechanic as well. So uh, tough at bat right here, battling two and two. The talented Ferris peers over that beautiful blue glove. Seems like he had a design for this event. Fastball, ground ball out to short. Surrounded out there by New Jersey and Nas Mule. For a quick thought on Jackson Ferris, we'd like to bring in the fourth member of our broadcast team, Danny Wexelman. What do you have for us on Jackson, Danny? Well, earlier at PG National in July, Darren, Jackson told me that he's been working on being mentally prepared for big moments. IMG has taught him how to play in front of big crowds, play in big moments, and also learning how to work out. He said he's still adjusting to working out. He's also working on a slider. He said he's a small-town kid from Mount Airy, North Carolina. And the late nights with Dad have been worth it. Dad, Jason, all that hard work, he told me, is paying off. Good stuff, Danny. He now goes to work against Dominic Hellman, one of the biggest men with a bat in his hands. He's out of Mill Creek, Washington. It has been explosive power at the PG National Showcase. Here, David, he's going to try and hang in the middle of the infield despite being as big as Aaron Judge. You love the raw power. Oh, the raw, raw power is without a doubt the, uh, the best in the class. During the home run derby, we saw him hit balls that places that nobody in the high school ranks can hit him in this big league ballpark so the power is there it's as with any big power package it's going to be the frequency and what he does with that kind of pitch as we saw see maybe ferris's best breaking ball so far he's an elite two sport athlete basketball is on his resume baseball as well bj and sophie are his parents it's just the three of them he's an only child that one sails to the backstop hunter six six and he wants to hang in the middle of the infield you know, these, like I said, the kids are very athletic, and, uh, you know, there's there's people always breaking barriers. So uh, if he's got the athleticism and the skills to do it, the hands to do it, why not? You see the Western Metal Supply Company sign? He hit it in the derby off of the word Western, the second E in there. Yeah, that's real. Looked like he might have got him. He did not go around. I have to say, Ferris's fastball is really impressive, and for a high school kid to be – Litting out these catapult bullet cannonballs that he's throwing. This is a real plus fastball, and, and uh, it's it's fun to watch his his body control on the mound right now. Breaking ball. That's the pitch I like. I, I'm going to tell you this. That's an even better take than it is a breaking ball. How do you take that pitch? You know, I mean, he must have uh, honestly kind of seen it. Maybe I don't yeah. know. That's a tough one because that if that was a fastball, it might have been a strike. But it, he's got a lot of. To go from 95 to 79, maybe he's slowing up a little bit and he caught on to it. Nolan Schubart gets the call now, and Nolan has been around these perfect game events for quite some time. Shuby, as he is known, Duran, Michigan, another one that plays at that Orchard Lake St. Mary's great program. He is a Michigan commit. He'll be headed to Michigan, and he's straightened up that time. Mike and Paulette are his parents. All league, all Catholic, all everything in the state of Michigan. And summa cum laude in the classroom, a 4.0 GPA, Nolan. That fastball at 93. What a good two-seam dive to that pitch. That's no fun. Yeah. I, feel, I feel like Shuby is such a great baseball name and such a good, easy baseball <laughs> nickname. Hey, Shuby. Shuby, Shuby. Love that. Let's go, Shub. Shubster. Ah, uh, you guys and your nicknames. I feel like it's a commitment to a manager. A manager in a post-game press conference in the big leagues can never 
refer to a player just by, let's say it's Mike Trout. Yes, Mike played well. It's Trouty or Mikey or Pensy. It's just baseball. You never call anybody by their name. It's just, and, and that's how we refer to each other. But Shuby just freaking <laughs> unloaded a freaking huge hack, a shoopster hack. What do you got for us, David, on Shuby? <laughs> that, that's what you're going to see from Shuby. <laughs> He loves watching Christian Yelich play. Luis Gonzalez in that dugout. The manager rolls it to the right side, into the glove. Right on over to the bag the play is made that time. Big Jaden Hilton over there turns it into an out. Perfect game, All-American Classic. Noah Schultz takes this responsibility and goes to work with it out of Oswego East High School in Aurora, Illinois. Noah, talented left-hander. Cangelosi sparks his travel team. He's a Vanderbilt commit. And Noah Schultz, the son of Larry and Kim. David, what will we see from this gifted left arm? Well, the first thing that's going to jump out at you is the fact that Noah Schultz is six foot nine, 220 pounds. Uh, but we, uh, at the banquet last night, we gave him the Trackman Award winner, which goes to the the player that the pitcher who spins the ball the best and Noah Schultz you know 2600 on his fastball spin rate over 2900 on his on his uh, curveball spin rate and just one of the tremendous left handers in this class four different lefties in the top 10 overall in the PG rankings and Schultz the spin master of the group. So Schultz will face a man who in the prospect world is quite famous and the way he handles his business is quite classy as well. His name is Sal Stewart. He was part of Perfect Games Select Festival several years back. Many of these athletes playing in PG's 14U Select Festival, 16 I believe all told, out of Westminster Christian School of Miami, another Vanderbilt commit, Sal Stewart. Salvador is his dad, Rosie is his mom, and Lindsay, 20 years old, his older sibling. Sal Stewart gets ready to roll. Matter of fact, at the 14U age group, he was actually the 14U National Player of the Year, as named by Perfect Game. And in the classroom for Sal, it's been on a roll throughout. Well, this is a bat. Sal Stewart, a, a career over 400 hitter in PG events, hit 534 with 17 home runs this spring down in a very competitive Florida environment. So just a young man who can flat hit. Danny, tell us a little bit more about Sal Stewart. Sal Stewart, the Miami native, and guys, he has a chance to work out with Yonder Alonso in Miami, and also a guy you might be familiar with if you're a Padres fan, Manny Machado. He's worked out with him. He told him that Manny wants Sal to represent his family, represent himself to the best of his abilities, and Sal wants you to know that he's doing just that. That's a cool thing, Hunter, to be able to bend the ear of guys that are grinding at the level you grind it at. Yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive to, to get that opportunity and for Machado to take the time. But it's exciting to get to work out in programs that the best in the world are working out. And that's, once again, why I think some of these kids are so good is there's so many of these uh, different 
you know, places you can go and train and work out and get the best of the best. So he's obviously preparing the right way, and we're seeing the results uh, here at the Perfect Game All-American Classic. He wants to do what you're doing after he plays, Hunter, as long as you played. He loves speaking publicly. He loves to write. He's an excellent writer. He loves to get out and be a, a lead speaker, be out front of things, and he hopes that he's able to do that someday. Jackson Holiday makes the play. You can see the hair flowing behind the young man out of Oklahoma. Sal Stewart is retired. Noah Schultz is looking a lot like Andrew Miller. The body control of a 6'9 kid in high school, this is very rare. I'm, I'm loving what I'm seeing from Schultz. -y. And if you want to, or Schultz, -y, we already called him Schultz. -y. Noah uh, Schultz. <laughs> you, you gave me next snap. Schultz Nager, the uh, pump you up. But he's got some body control. He doesn't look like he's 6'9, but he definitely is when you see him in a picture. I love the Andrew Miller comp. I absolutely love it. I think, you know, when you think of 6'9 lefties who throw from the lower slot, you're not obviously thinking you're Chris Sales, you're Randy Johnson's. But Andrew Miller, you nailed it. This is Nas Mule. He is out of Patterson, New Jersey. He's the number one player in New Jersey. He, too, was a 14U Select Festival member. Mule is a Miami commit. Will he pitch? Will he hit at Miami? He'll probably do both at the college level because, David, he has that kind of two-way skill. At PG National, he threw 94 as an infielder, then 97 as a pitcher. Off the bat, it was 95. There's a lot of tools here. Oh, huge tools, but there, there's a comp that I think might be the best, tightest comp of anybody here. He is Michael Givens at the same age. Michael Givens was a primary shortstop with a great arm. When Mule takes the mound later in this classic, you'll see his arm slot is just like Michael Givens is now in the big leagues. Um, and I think Michael Givens, just like Naz, wanted to be a middle infielder. It just happened to be he was more talented eventually as an arm. These are two-way guys. These are guys that watch Shohei Otani as much as they can and dream of maybe being next to follow him. It's tough to do. I definitely think Otani is doing some amazing thing for the sport, amazing things for kids to just – just to plant the seed that it is possible, to show us that it is possible, because everyone's going to tell you, oh, you have to pick one, you have to pick one. Well, Otani's saying, mm, no, you actually don't. You can do both. Now, I've, I've been frustrated over the years at how many colleges don't do, aren't more active in letting players do both, because when you're limited by roster and, and talent and everything, and you have somebody who can legitimately go both ways, there's no reason in my mind not to let them do it. Schultz with a cut fastball under the swing of Nas Mule. He goes down on strikes. Not only was that a 93-mile-an-hour fastball, but it ran in under his knuckles, Hunter. Yeah, that, that, that had some nice break to it. I'm not going to lie. I really like the swing even from Nas here. Uh, yeah, he did, he did strike out, but that was short. That was compact, and that was, that was a dangerous hack. And it was just a great pitch, perfectly executed from 6-9. Uh, top inside part of the zone. That's a tough spot to get to, but really like his at-bat, really like his swing. Another Select Festival alum and a key two-way guy. You saw him in the graphic a moment ago. You'll see him later. Riley Stanford out of Buford High School. Great program. Stuart Chester, the head coach in Gainesville, Georgia, is where he makes his home. As big as he is now, he's kind of been this big since he was a 14U player. Now there are guys catching up. I think the key for, for Riley and seeing him, because I was able to call his game at 14U on a national level, is he's gotten a little bit bigger but leaner in all the right places. The waist has gotten a little smaller, and the shoulders have gotten broader. And, of course, he's a teammate of Dylan Lesko's at Buford High School. That's a quite a duo. Comes up empty that time, one and one the count. This is the son of Ron and April, and... The big bro to Reese, his younger 16-year-old sister. I'm sure he's her bodyguard when she lets him. He was the Select Festival MVP a couple of years back when he played in that game. He's an A-B honor roll student. Tried to stay back as long as he could on that spinning breaking ball. Going to continue the two-way theme. Stanford, we'll, we'll see him pitch much later in the game and up to 97, 98 on the mound in the past. So uh, the prototypical right field tools on defense and as a hitter, but that right field arm strength also translates very well to the mound. In fact, I know scouts, plenty of scouts actually, who like Riley Stanford better on the mound than they do as a, a right fielder. They're giving Eddie Johnson and that coach's box. He coaches modern-day Catholic in Chula Vista. They're giving him a hard time. 
these coaches, local coaches, and then Major League stars helping these athletes out. Breaking ball again is rolled foul. I'll, I'll quickly tell you uh, about the team in white. That, of course, is the East team. Clint Hurdle, longtime Major League manager, is the head coach. We talked about Eddie, Manny Hermosillo Jr. from Montgomery High School in San Diego, Lloyd Thompson started the Chili Dogs program, the home plate Chili Dogs in Atlanta, one of the great BP throwers in the world, as is Bobby Freeland. That's the East staff. Pretty impressive staff, not going to lie, to get to work <laughs> with so, with Clint Hurdle. I think he's done amazing things. Uh, one, of the, one of the coolest things, I, I got to talk to Todd Helton at the Celebrity All-Star softball game. He was the manager, and I asked him, like, who taught you, like, wh what manager, like, really shifted your career? And he said Clint Hurdle was one of the best managers that he had ever played for and, and, like, really shifted the way he looked at the game. And I will say that the energy he brought when I got to be in the dugout with him one time uh, was really striking. So I love Clint Hurdle. I've seen him on the baseball field, and it's pretty good for these kids to get to work with him. Boy, he spoiled a good change up away. Well, Hunter, you've seen it this week, spending time with Clint. He's just taken a head first dive into the amateur space he's decided for a while this is what he wants to do and it feels like he does kind of like you it feels like he does nothing halfway and so these these kids now are getting the same energy and the same passion that Todd Helton got yeah it, it, he he electrified the dugout that I was in and and I felt it and, and I I'm I'm a big believer in like energy in the dugout and movement and life and 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 keeping everyone active and, and into it so uh big fan of that and big fan I, i'm with him on that like i love the youth game i think it's very pure and it's a pure time for these kids they're they're growing into men and uh there's a lot that you can impact and influence the, the future of our great game we'll talk about that west staff in a bit it's a unique staff in its own right with big time world series hero but we'll do that in just a bit Hurdle leading his group and trying to beat Noah Schultz out there on the mound. We're, we got a good at bat going on here. What pitch are we on, Darren? This is pitch number eight of this at bat. Pitch number eight. That fastball up and away. Three and two the count. 91 miles an hour. It's an easy 91. Still coming into that frame. Loves to fish when he has time. Said the silver lining from the 20 and 21 pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic, he said, very simple. A lot of these athletes said this. I got to know my family better. My busy schedule slowed down just a little bit, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, the bat rolls on. Hunter, I think the coolest thing, heck, and you and I hosted a show through that together, remotely, obviously. A lot of the athletes we talked to made it clear I played catch with my brother, and I hadn't played catch with him a long time. I, I had my mom throw me BP. I think family unity and friend unity those that felt safe with one another they worked out very uniquely didn't they yeah and it's it's fun to hear the different stories and how they took advantage because a lot of times you get rewarded for what you do when no one's watching and everyone was putting in their work when no one was watching and I, i've heard it from from many of my friends and, and many colleagues that you know they did get to spend more time with their kids and it was a blessing to to have that quality time and look who wins the battle here tit pinch <laughs> tit pitch for the big Sh Arnold Sh <laughs> Schultzenegger. Noah Schultzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> Got him.
Absolutely. This is the ballpark that Tony built, and his legend lives on here in San Diego. Coming up tomorrow, nobody brings you baseball like MLB tonight. Live look-ins to every big play, plus highlights and analysis of all the day's action. You're only minutes away from a great play on MLB tonight, tomorrow at 6 Eastern on MLB Network. David Ronsley, Hunter Pence, Danny Wexelman, and Darren Sutton, thanks for hanging out with us. We really appreciate your time. If you're just joining us, these are the finest players heading into their senior year of high school. This is the perfect game All-American Classic. And get to know, out of Chesney, South Carolina, Tristan Smith. He's a Clemson commit, loves going to Clemson football games. He's a very talented player. He, too, played at the 14U Select Festival with his twin brother, Ashton, as that one is rolled foul. We get things started with a man out of Wisconsin, left on left here. It's Gavin Killen. Gavin Killen goes to work. And Keelan out of Milton, Wisconsin. Hitters baseball. R.J. Fergus runs that program. And David, he's committed to go to Louisville. He's been active with Team USA in the trials. Christina and Chris are his parents. And as a Wisconsin native, it's a, a very easy comp to former PG All-American Gavin Lux, now with the Dodgers. But with Tristan Smith on the mound, one of the most dominant performances at the PG National was 93-95. I think he struck out five of the six hitters he pitched. But his big pitch is a curveball. He throws it with power. He'll throw it up to 81, 82 miles an hour when he's in rhythm with it. And when he gets confidence in it, he's going to go with it over and over again. And that's what I'm looking for now to see whether he gets that feel. Because sometimes in this, the, the pitchers know they're just throwing one inning. They want to go out and throw hard. But if he gets in that curveball rhythm, you'll see what I'm talking about. Changeup dives down. And in Hunter, he, he shares that his mind is his greatest strength. He said, my mental game has evolved a lot lately, and I'll put the ball in play with regularity. I love it. And I couldn't agree more. The mind is, is your greatest, greatest weapon out there. Goes down on strikes. Let's get it down to Danny Wexelman. She'll talk with Mikey Romero. Danny. Mikey, I think the whole city of Menifee is here for you. How does that make you feel? Uh, it's amazing. Just uh, know that uh, all the support is here, and uh, you know I'm just ready to get this at bat started and have some fun. Mikey, thank you. Outstanding stuff. We get to know Mikey Romero. Thank you, Danny, for doing that. The access and part of this game. We want to make it a little bit different than the college, minor league, and professional games you may be watching. And Mikey Romero, Michael, his given name, the first All-American to be named. The press conference was here back in June. As Romero waves over the top of that one. San Diego show. David, there's the breaking ball you were talking about. Mikey is an LSU commit. Switched with Jay Johnson from Arizona to LSU. Fastball. David, you sold the breaking ball. Mikey saw the first one. <laughs> he did. Very much so. Um, and when, when you're a left-handed pitcher and a left-handed hitter steps into the box, that's probably the first thing on your mind is, okay, I'm going to go to the breaking ball. But Romero has excellent back control. We saw so much more power than we thought he had at the PG National. So he's got the barrel control and the bat speed. That's exactly what you're talking about. Pretty good pitch away. Tried to flip into the left field, Hunter. Yeah, nice short, you know. Got a little barrel on it right at him. I'm not sure uh, how much these hitters are used to hitting with these wooden bats, but uh, looks like he put a decent swing on that just right at him. Well, I, will, I, I think these hitters... All truth, especially this level of hitter, they've hit far more with wood than they have with aluminum at this point of their careers. They work out with aluminum. You know, they're, you've, you saw the numbers on some of the at-bats that these players have in WWBA tournaments, which are obviously all wood bats. So, no, they are much more practiced with wood than anything you could relate to at the same age. There is no one more well-rounded athletically than this man. He's an incredible quarterback, Caden Martin. He's at the McDonough School and. Baltimore, Maryland, East Cobb Astros, his travel team. He's a Miami commit, and at this point, he is a Miami baseball and football commit. We've got a trio of players in this game, I believe, who are dual, dual sport football and baseball commits at the college level, and, and they're talking about serious programs, being a, a football player and a baseball player at Miami. That's big-time stuff. His favorite subject, Greek mythology. And he opened up a little bit further. He said, I just love learning about Greek gods. If he does athletically what he thinks he can do at Miami, they'll put him in that status down in South Florida. I just love that answer. Hunter, when we have conversations with these athletes, you and I and, and David as well, 
Uh, this generation of athlete is a little more open than maybe going back a generation. I think that guy likes the Greek uh, gods as well, <laughs> working on the triceps <laughs> <laughs> sculpture. Uh, what would you say, Darren? No, that, that's all. They're very open. They're very, you know, out there. They're not afraid to share stories like that, the subjects they study. I think if you go back to – now, I'm a generation older than you, Hunter, but I think everyone in my generation would have said business. I'm supposed to say business. <laughs> yeah, uh, the information age, the Instagram, it's fun to have fun. And uh, and Greek gods are fun. I was a big fan of them as well at his age. So good at bat, got on pace. And uh, the West is, uh, you know, threatening here with two outs now. And the man who is threatening with Jackson Holiday looking on is Little C, Karsten Sabathia out of Alpine, New Jersey. C.C. Sabathia is dad. Bergen Catholic, his school. That one skips away. They were trying to keep an eye on Martin. Martin will turn that speed loose right away. That's what speed will do. It will get your attention. find it kind of also fascinating that Mark McGuire's kid's a pitcher, CC Spathia's kid's a hitter. <laughs> I guess I'll, I don't know if they don't want to be like their dads or their dads are like, you don't want to be a pitcher, you don't want to be a hitter. Well, but, CC was actually a very good hitter. He just played his entire career almost in the American League with the DH. But the one year he spent half the year in Milwaukee without being DH for, he hit two home runs. Dad could hit, I remember that. Karsten takes a pitch over the inside, one and one the count. Mom is Amber. And he is a big brother, Karsten is, to two, make it three sisters. Carter, Saya, and Jaden. Of course, dad having nearly a two-decade major league career. Carson also plays basketball, football, and soccer. Does that change up? A little two-seam fastball, I think, is what it was. Just dove too far away. That one shot right to the backstop. Lost his release point on that, you know, way, way, arm was way, uh, way late. He'll settle down. This would be a good time you think, okay, sometimes he struggled a bit with his, his fastball command. His curveball's his best pitch. Don't be afraid to throw it, Tristan. Fastball, fly ball, center field. I've got it is what is said out there by Paxton Kling. And he was telling us the truth. Saw it loud and clear with those Oakleys on. Good work for Tristan Smith. The perfect game, All-American Classic. This is Andrew Dukanich the fourth. He's out of Indianapolis. This is an outstanding student as well. Academic award winner last night. The student of the year in the classroom. This is a Vanderbilt commit, and this is a talented right arm. Philly scout team and the Indiana Bulls, his travel teams. Dad is Andrew the third. Mom is Caroline. And his siblings are Sam and Jack and Luke. Hello, guys. We hope you're watching your big bro work. And this is how good of a student. Why did he earn the award? 4.6 GPA, 4.2 cumulative. 
And in your senior year, when we hear a lot of athletes in the gym at 11 because they've earned the right to get out of school early, eight AP courses his senior year, eight advanced placement courses. For the Manhunter, they call Duke Dukanich. That's a good nickname. I, I wasn't sure if it was going to be, can that dude itch? Yes, that dude can itch. <laughs> uh, and he looks like he knows what he's doing. I can see in his, his presence, uh, really, really body control. I mean, eight AP courses, uh, that's impressive stuff. And uh, I'm looking forward to watching him work on the mound. It seems like he know, he's diligent. If he makes the Vanderbilt, he'll start as a, a junior in the classroom all those AP credits. That's exactly right. I'm sure he's passing all those AP tests. Get to know Cam Collier. He just reclassified. So instead of heading into his junior year where he was one of the top players in the country, he now is a senior. He is committed to go to Louisville. He is certainly a draft product. His dad, Lou, had a very successful professional and major league career. Cam Collier out of Austell, Georgia, East Cobb Astros, his travel team. Well, Collier was a, a player. It was it was pretty obvious that he'd be one of the leading candidates to to move up a year. He's physically mature, 6'2", 210, and one of the most polished professional style hitters um, in high school baseball right now. You watch him take a batting practice or or work work a barrel, work to different fields, and you can tell that he has really, really dedicated a lot of time to his game. That, by the way, was a hammer back foot slider. Yes. That I mean, was, that was a nasty pitch that was 86 and it doesn't matter how polished or how much you work hard you're gonna have trouble hitting that pitch he's still got a big strike left and i like how quiet he is you can definitely see uh you know in cam here how how quiet and soft he is and that was a nasty pitch it's not dude can itch it's dude can pitch i like that one that one's better <laughs> i need a little more time and since all his mates yes, are watching that. that will live that will stick and that will be a part of his life back in indianapolis i want to Maybe elevate the fastball. That's exactly what they do. It sails up and out of the zone. Malcolm Moore, Adonis Guzman, Ike Irish, Ross Highfield. There are a lot of talented catchers working on the West squad, and it's it's fun. I love watching Guzman work, who's behind the plate now. As that one sails up and away to Cameron. Guzman out of New York, the battery mate of Dukanich. Grew up not too far from Yankee Stadium. He's gotten to play as a prepster in Yankee Stadium. He let's that one sail up and away three and two of the count. Yeah, at the top of the show, I was talking about the year of the pitcher and everything like that. And Dukanich is going to be extremely popular with the scouts because he's physically mature, 6'3", 205. And as, as you mentioned, Hunter, it's a calm delivery. We've seen two pitches for strikes for him as he blows that 95-mile-an-hour fastball past Collier for strike three. Let's get it on down to Danny Wexelman, the manager on the other side in that third base dugout, World Series hero Luis Gonzalez. Danny? Darren, thank you. Luis Gonzalez, 19-year Major League vet, five-time All-Star World Series champ, manager of the West team. How much fun are you having in here? I'm having fun. I'd like to see a couple more hits get up there for our squad right now, but it's great to see all the young talent out here and this is the future of our game, so it's exciting to be out here and watch these guys play. You've spent so much time with these guys this week and throughout the year, the past couple of years, all the Select Fest kids here. What makes you so encouraged about the class of 2022? Well, they're big, strong kids, so uh, and they're all excited to have that opportunity of hopefully playing at the next level someday. So, uh, you know, they, they continue to work hard, and uh, you're seeing good talent out here every day. And we see a base hit there. Last one for you. You're a dad. You've been in the position of a lot of different parents. What advice do you have for the parents out there? Enjoy the process. I mean, my son played, Jacob played in this uh, in 2017. To, to have an opportunity to be around these other top players in the country, it's, it's pretty special. So um, they're going to see now that, uh, you know, where they stand, and, and hopefully they can continue to succeed and get to that next level. Luis, thank you. You got it. Darren, back to you. Thank you, guys. Base hit by Jaden Hilton, who's out of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Palm Beach Garden High School, a Stetson commit. Hilton, the son of Robert and the brother of Andrew and Brandon, a great athlete out there at first right now. And uh, Devon White, a relative in that family tree to Jaden Hilton. He's out there at first. Here is Luke Heyman, catcher. Heyman takes a fastball with some life that dives down and in. He's out of Longwood, Florida, this catcher. He's at Lake Brantley High School, and he's with the FTB, which is Florida Travel Ball, Philly scout team. He's a future Florida Gator. So, wait, 
That's two pitches in a row. That's 93. That's heavy. That's bowling ball heavy. It's just getting out of the strike zone. I mean, he, there's so, so much life on that. And when you combine that with the ability to make the ball go the other direction that we saw with the slider, if you can make a ball go each direction with some command, you're going to be very successful. And I, I almost, first thing I wonder, is, is that a two-seam, four-seam thing, or is that just a pitch he got on the side on, whether there was intent to it or not? He's been 94, 95, that was 93. It almost, by the velocity, seems like he was throwing a two-seamer. A little pickoff throw. If, if you don't mind, Hunter and folks at home, I'm going to share the words from Duke Kanich when he shares exactly about his fastball. He says, as you see one more time, the aggressive throw by Guzman. He says, and I quote, I manipulate my fastball with two seams and cutters at times, but only see a slight dip in velocity with my fastball, but I love to manipulate the baseball. He says, I'm trying to turn my cutter into a weapon as well. So that makes a lot of sense why we're seeing it do a, a couple different things. Like the strikeout, um, the strikeout to Collier, he definitely had the rise and the ball was flat. And now he's facing these right-handed hitters. He's getting a little bit of that sink. You're seeing a little run on it. And it, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, you know, uh, pitching is, is deception. And, and just little tweaks make the ball do different things. And the fact that he's so smart, he's figuring out what the hitters are trying to do to him. But I loved Hilton, and I, and, and I loved how he stayed inside that ball. That was a very beautiful path. It was an inside-out, a uh, little line drive. He shot up the middle, but just a beautiful swing. The talented Heyman. High school all-star game at Coors Field as well this year. A lot of these athletes able to play in that. The son of Kurt and Debbie. Shot, and that one is foul. I want to share some words a little bit further from Duke Kanich about the coronavirus pandemic shutdown. He said, I learned what lazy does to you. I felt like I wasted parts of my 2020 summer. I blame the pandemic for messing up my training. I learned the importance of each and every start that summer. I learned how to prepare and perform for every single time out and focused big for this summer. I want to be electric every time out and leave it all on the field. He was honest that he didn't attack things last year as much as he should have. And it, to me, it's it's not what happens. It's what how do you respond? How do you respond to what happens? And it looks like he's like, okay, uh, I made a mistake here, and I'm not going to allow that to happen again. I'm going to let it propel me. And, and that's, that's how, you, you know, you take control of your life, your career, and, and what you're doing uh, going forward. That one's crushed to left field. Toward the wall, it goes. Gone! Luke Heyman with a perfect game, All-American Classic home run. And while we knew it was in, and we saw him do the exact same thing at the PG National Showcase with a home run at Tropicana Field, and that was a no-doubter right off the barrel. The El Hay Kid, as he calls himself. El Hay crushed that one to El Hay. Batting last in the lineup, but not last in, the, in your hearts or in the game. That's an absolute line drive. He got all of it. He knew it, and... Uh, he celebrated it. That was that was pretty. Oh yeah. We as you said, we want to see these players celebrating. We want to see them showing their emotions. That's what baseball is about today. I think Caden Martin knew right off the bat he didn't have a chance at that either. I like that he looked into the West dugout and like gave him a little <laughs> smile coming from third to home. Just told that is 103 off the bat exit velocity. 103. Impressive. All right. So something to get excited about. Joey Gallo, by the way, homered in this game. It was out where the beach area is out there, and right as Drew Jones pulls that one foul. Nolan Gorman, who's coming up the ranks in the Cardinals system, just to throw out a few guys who have homered in this game. Yep, Joey hit it. Keep going. Yep, further, further. Kind of where the All-American Classic sign is right there. That's where Joey Gallo hit it well, I think when he, he was it, in high school. He hit it over that sign, 447 feet. And so let's say who's who. If you, Look. It's an all-star game. You've, you're homering against a pitcher. And Duke Kanich made it clear, I'm giving you everything I've got. So you're homering against a guy who literally is giving it all like a one-inning closer thing. Yeah, I mean, that was an, a, a great swing, a great at bat. And, uh, you know, some the best hitters sometimes hit you every now and then. you got to move on to the next pitch. Once again, how do you respond? He responded with a heck of a slider. That shows you as, something. As, as Hunter said, as he gets Drew Jones that time, 17-year-old Drew Jones. Tamar Johnson takes his turn now, the talented number 42. 
who homered at the Perfect Game National Showcase, and it wasn't just a kind of homer. Now this, folks, we're at Petco. This is at Tropicana Field. This, the home of the Rays. Hunter, this was a no-doubter. Yeah, and this kid can hit. He has a lot of at-bats. I think it was something around 500 at-bats in Perfect Game uh, Showcases. So. He's he's the if there is a veteran of this of this uh, kind of event he's the guy and you, you saw him leading the huddle uh, pregame he was in the middle getting everyone fired up so he's got leadership qualities we heard him talking about his teammates and uh, he's do, he's been there and he's done it. Duquan is showing his respect with the first pitch changeup. Skips that one in there, back-to-back -back change ups. He loves when you talk about tomorrow. He loves watching Corey Seeger play and Wander Franco hit. And his favorite team, the Dodgers. He's a Georgia boy, so sorry, Braves. Take no offense. The Dodgers, his favorite team. He's in Mays High School in Atlanta, Georgia. Wander Franco is an interesting selection. <laughs> a fellow teenager. I've always thought Tremar is a player, to get back to the comps, and I didn't get to see Terry Pendleton play at the same age. But uh, it's a lot of the same in the body and the tools, the 1991 National League Most Valuable Player and Batting Champion. Now that is a perfectly located changeup right there. You don't see that too often. Now coming in, coming into this game, I was not thinking of Dukanic in that kind of changeup. He's a, you know, fastball slider guy, but that changeup has has really left an impression. Danny Wexelman, I know you have more on Tamar. What is it? Two things for you, Darren. Number one, you mentioned Tamar uncommitted. I learned in July he's got 28 offers, but he's waiting until the travel ball circuit closes. He said he hasn't had time to take a visit yet. He's focused on the coaching staffs and the academics to help him make his choice, and he wants to be a business management major. And by the way, guys, he finished his college credits for high school. Excuse me, he finished credits for high school. He's going to take college courses at home with his mom, calculus, reading, history, anatomy, and you see he's rocking number 42. That is, of course, for Jackie Robinson. He was a finalist for the Jackie Robinson Player of the Year Award this year. And the winner of that award, thank you, Danny, that's great stuff. The winner has a bat in his hands right now, Elijah Green, and he deals with an elevated fastball at 94 miles an hour. Green singled, and I mean firmly singled back in the first inning. Something I'm looking forward to maybe happening in this at-bat. Tremar Johnson, 105 stolen bases in his PG career, so you know he's aggressive on the plate. Adonis Guzman behind the plate catching for the West team has the biggest arm of any catcher, any position player in this event. It would be a great showdown if Johnson decided to uh, make a try at second base. When you talk about these top two players and how they're very, very different, David, uh, obviously, you know, in size, that's the first thing that jumps out. But these these are two men that could profile in the in the top five picks next year. Oh, no, no question about it. I I think right now, if you did a mock draft, they would indeed both be in it. Um, you know, but you said totally different players. You know, hitters, high school hitters, are not looked at the the same way. You know, but when you see the number of at bats they have, that's a big thing for for college hitters. They've shown it. They've gone out and, and, and hit against older, mature players. They've got the repetitions. But when you look at that number, 519 at bats for Tamar Johnson, you know he has the repetitions too. Do it, Agonis Guzman, by the way. I'm, I'm seeing you block that ball up behind the plate. Do it, man. He's blocked two or three pitches this inning very well, which is great to see because he's, he's the arm. He's the Adonis arm. That's a slider that skips on by him that time, so... With two outs, the runner will take off and reach. He'll get on himself a little bit about that. But, again, we're seeing a lot of Duke Kanich, and I'm sure he wished we weren't. I'm sure he wished he was back in there. But, gosh, David, the raw stuff is electric. Yeah, and, and the most difficult job, by the way, in, in a game like this is to catch because you're dealing with pitchers who are out there throwing nasty stuff. You may have – Adonis Guzman may have never caught Duke Kanich before. So he's seeing a player. He doesn't know how his ball behaves or anything like that, and you're out here on national TV trying to block this stuff, catch this stuff, frame this stuff, it's really hard for these catchers. Paxton Kling digs in out of Roaring Spring, Pennsylvania. He's a high-skilled athlete. 
is when you ask him which baseball players he'll dial up on his phone and watch clips of, he makes it clear. Pete Rose. I watch him all the time. That's a great thing, folks, about YouTube. You can go watch whoever you want. That is wild to me because Pete Rose was I don't know if he was playing while this young no. man was alive. So how does that happen? It's amazing. And you know, Pete Rose is the hit king, so it makes sense to watch the guy who did it the best. The most. I thought you'd like that answer though. I mean it's and I talked to him about it because I shared with him that despite my dad being a Hall of Fame player, Don Sutton, Pete Rose was my favorite player too. Uh, my late father never had a problem with that. He was fine with that. But uh, we share the same favorite player, Paxton Kling and I. Hunter, what do you have for me on the hair, the flow? Uh, it's it's definitely some uh, some big league flow right there. And, the, you know, he already gets a whole bunch of credit points for watching Pete Rose and only Pete <laughs> Rose, uh, you know, find a way to get hits. And Pete Rose has so many great quotes. And he was one of my favorite players as well. Um, it, it's cool that the kids, they all they all have a lot of old-timers and respect for the old-timers. Some of my nephews, they all love the old-timers and the MLB, the show game, and all of that. So um, big league hair for sure, 100%. Little Jankowski-ish. Ooh, I like that. He said his inspiration are his parents, Craig and Beth. He said they inspire me because they're hardworking, determined, yet caring. So my dad takes me to every event. My mom stays home and takes care of our family. A very fortunate man, he says, as he rolls that one out on a high bounce, racing to the bag, the big fella. Stepping on it is Dom Hellman out of Washington, a five unassisted, stomping on the bag. Oh, Luke Heyman. Sully, will he make it to campus as a Florida Gator? He just homered at the PG All-American Classic. Now we're rolling. Boy, our perfect game stat of the game. And the final fundraising, raising funds for Perfect Game Cares and also for Rady Children's Hospital. Dylan Lesko and Karsten Sabathia doing dramatic work. This is a record, by the way, $108,000 raised for underserved youth to take part in sports and academics more so and also against the fight for pediatric cancer. So congratulations and the PG Cares Foundation. The brainchild and the heart effort of Jerry Ford, the founder of Perfect Game. Jennifer Ford, the chairperson of that great group, does such a great job. And so congratulations to all those gentlemen. Lefty, Brandon Barriera is out of Hollywood, Florida. He's about to deal with Justin Crawford for the second time. Brandon's an American Heritage High School. Bruce Avon, the head coach of that program. And Brandon Cannon's Baseball University, his travel team, where Nick James is his coach. Brandon is a Vanderbilt commit as he has a quick prayer before he goes to work with number 11 on that jersey, the son of Melissa and Sergio. It's Brandon Barriera. Brandon has just gotten 
better by little increments so consistently over the last couple of years. It's never been that big jump. It's just a mile, t mile or two an hour here. It's the sharper slider, the more consistent slider. The slider's his pitch, though. Um, he'll he'll re uh, reach back and touch 95 maybe, but the slider's the one that's dominated competition so far. He's very honest about what pushes him. And he was clear, and this is these are his words. I rode the bench for five years when I played travel ball. I worked my butt off to earn a spot and to master my craft. Guys had more talent at the time, but I would not let them outwork me. Five years, he was way down on the depth chart. He's not anymore. And guess what, Brandon? You're a perfect game All-American now. These guys are so polished, it's hard to believe that they're in high school because we're watching just a really elite level, and, and you can tell that he's been working. He's been working for five years. He's a, you can tell he's dialed in exactly how he's standing on the mound. He's on that far side, and he knows what he's doing. Look at the dive on that two-seamer, Pence. Are you kidding me? I mean, 3-0, just let, it, let, the, let the fastball fly, and, uh, man, that thing definitely took a dive. That's bottom dropped <laughs> off of that. That was 93. Uh, he took a little bit off, got a little movement. Goes back to the same spot, 93, right up to the shins that one goes. That I mean, it, that's a you don't see too many turbo sinking lefties, and that's a turbo sinker. That's a little bit of the, uh, the if you're talking Dodgers, the, uh, the Alexander that comes out of the bullpen, throwing those huge sinkers. Look at he chokes way up on the bat with two strikes now on a 3-2 count as that one's outside. Good at bat in the end. He let it eat 3-0, and oh, dealt with a tough pitch, <laughs> and... And all of a sudden went to 3-2 and, and then earned himself a walk. That's a pretty good bat. Yeah, I like the choking up. You see that once in a while, but in today's game, you really don't. But but Crawford, with such great speed, he just needs to put the ball on the ground with two strikes facing the tough lefty, and he can have a productive at-bat, or he can lay off that slider and still have a productive at-bat. All right, Jackson Holiday, your turn again. He grounded out to second base as that one is driven back to the bag. Give him some spare time, Heyman. He's very popular. Guys that did homers are very popular. I've learned that. I don't like him necessarily, the former pitcher in me at all. Speaking of the former pitcher in you, what do you think of the mechanics here? It's pretty solid, huh? Hey, he hangs, hangs over the rubber a long time, gives his arm a chance to get up top. We remember lefty Mackenzie Gore, who has made it to the big leagues with the Padres, a talented lefty. Yeah, it's just very athletic. It's very simple, Hunter. Beautiful throw down. And Jones, who is back behind the plate, Jared Jones makes that throw. Stolen base. Good speed there, Justin Crawford. Well, that's a speed steal on the pitcher thing. Justin Crawford, a 6-1-1 runner. But Jared Jones did a nice job getting out of there, getting rid of the ball. I had 1.89 on the stopwatch on that pop time in game. 1.89, which is, is, is exceptional. And Jones threw out three guys at PG National. From, you know, in his work behind the plate there. So you combine Jones' size, 6'5", 230, with the ability to get rid of the ball like that, the arm strength. That throw was right on the bag, too. Yeah, he definitely stole that off the pitcher, but he's grease lightning out there. That was uh, – that I've never seen someone gain so much ground. Uh, he's flying. Uh, great throw, but you can't get him if he steals it off the pitcher, which you most likely – you almost always are doing. I'm stuck on your question you asked me. What do you think about his mechanics? Because he certainly looks athletic. That's where I want to start. He looks very athletic, very era does. Well, when I, yeah, when I'm watching a pitcher, I'm just kind of watching for release angles. I don't know mechanics at all. I'm just looking at the miles per hour, how the ball is moving, and, and kind of his athleticism. So, like, what am I going to do to face it as a, as a hitter? He's pretty fluid. Uh, seems like he knows where it's going. But to me, I, I just I feel like he's got great body control. Well, I'm looking at the plant leg. He plants so well there, gets his arm out front and extended, but he's still throwing off that front side so well and using that landing leg as a lever and snapped off a nasty slider there to Jackson Holiday, who, as we were talking earlier, has some of the best barrel control in the class, but he didn't have a chance against that slider. Jason Jones was a Jackie Robinson Award finalist last night, deservedly so. You think about... Dallas Tigers team, you think about Clayton Kershaw, you think about Hunter Dozier, but the list is incredible. Giovanni Gallardo, Zach Duke coming through there, just a lot of fun names, dozens and dozens that have also played travel ball for that Dallas Tigers team. 
former PG All-American Michael Kopech, now with the Chicago White Sox. He has a batter's box presence that he is so excited to destroy <laughs> anything you throw over the plate. <laughs> Just look at him. He's like, please throw me a strike. Like, please throw me a strike. Runner on the way to third. Fired down. Yeah, yeah, it was a huge jump. Not much you could do about that. He swiped that one on the pitcher. And that's instincts. Just good baseball instincts. And, man, he can just absolutely <laughs> move. It's fun to watch him run. A lot like his dad. He won the Leaf Baseball Card Most Projectable Award, did Crawford last night. Jason Jones, the win reality top performer. Two great partners of Perfect Game. What a smile he had on his face, Jason Jones. JJ. Tied him up. That one down and in. That had some cut to it. Yikes. I like young power hitters who get right up there on the plate, as Jason Jones does. He wants the ball in the inner half. He's going to create, you know, the, the, the angle with the pitcher to try to get as many pitches on the inside half as he can just so he can turn on them and drive them. Breaking ball, hammer on two and one. It's two and two. Well, that's a pretty pitch. He said, I grew up inspired by Andy Pettit, learning and watching the video clips of him. That looked like a Pettit breaking ball. He said, now I watch Marcus Stroman, his swag, his competitiveness, and his confidence. But I learned a lot from Pettit. It's a piece of that change up. Well, what he's done so far with his breaking ball right now, he's thrown it anywhere between 76 and 83. He's got feel for the break. He's got feel for changing speeds with it. And the maturity and the confidence to do that as a 17-year-old really stands out. Jones working as his battery mate behind home plate. Jared Jones is the catcher. Runner at third. Got him to swing over the top of a breaking ball. Jason Jones goes down on strikes. And that was the power 83 mile an hour slider. And it's, it has the depth, but look at the location. Jones didn't recognize that pitch at all. He was still swinging that pitch over the plate, and it was on his, on his toes at, in no time. And now Gavin Turley takes his opportunity. This is a man with tools that, you know, you need a whole garage and maybe a workshop to, to put him in as he rolls that one firm to the right side. Gobbled up, fired in time for the out. R.J. Austin with the play to end things. Barry Era, talented stuff out of Hollywood, Florida. Jaden Newt goes to work. We'll meet him in just a moment. What a great partnership with Top Chops Beef Jerky. And the CEO of Top Chops as the title sponsor is Dusty Jaquins. Danny Wexelman going to talk with Dusty. Guys.
Darren, thank you. Dusty Jake wins, Top Chop CEO. Can you describe the partnership? How did this come about with Perfect Game? You know, it came, uh, came about with a uh, visit to the East Cobb facility in Atlanta uh, just to see the grand opening of the new facility. Went back the next day and was watching the uh, youth camp for underserved children, which just uh, kind of warmed my heart. And uh, so I started to pursue it a little bit more. Uh, a few more weeks, we had decided uh, that we were going to have a partnership together. The philanthropic side of Top Chops is incredible. Can you share with everyone what you all do in the community? You know, we want we're, we do a lot of different things in the community. One of the things that we're going to do moving forward is we're going to have a, uh, a Top Chop Stampede across America, and that's going to be to stamp out child hunger. So that'll be the name of it, Top Chop Stampede to stamp out child hunger. Uh, serving underserved kids, hungry kids, uh, near and dear to my heart, and uh, any way we can help will uh, be good. Well, Dusty, I love to hear that, and I'm so excited that you all are working with Perfect Game. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Darren, back to you. Well, that's outstanding stuff. On the mound, Jaden Newt, who's out of Oak Park, California. You know who his high school coach is at Sierra Canyon? You folks remember Jerry Royster, longtime Major League infielder? That's his high school coach as that one is fouled off and a big, big swing there. An opportunity, by the way, to, to get to know a new man with a bat in his hands. This is Jared Jones who came on to catch. Jones goes to work now against Jaden Newt. And Jones comes from that, that group of players we've been talking so much about in Georgia that have had so many repetitions, have played so much baseball by the time they're 17 years old. And last inning was catching, mentioned that 6'5", 235, and big, big right-handed power. And he has been in the PG Tech cage, by the way. Visit perfectgame.org and learn more about PG Tech, the multi-layered partnership to help players develop and to grow athletically, and there is just a lot of good things going on with the man they call Bear, Jared Jones Bear, at East Cobb Yankees team. He's an LSU commit, Walton High School. As that one is in on his hands that time, popped up to the right side and put over there by Karsten Sabathia. Let's go inside that PG Tech cage and, and take a look. A time to contact, best energy transfer there, Hunter Pence, arm to hand, 102 mile an hour, exit velocity in-depth research on your development as an athlete partnership with pg tech i know you love that kind of stuff hunter it's beautiful to get that angle and, and really see how quick are you getting to the ball and how long are you in the zone because it's about creating time uh you know jones is 10 out of 10 as far as posture he definitely is a bear and he looks like a big leaguer already he's probably bigger than most of them yeah that's a big big fella it's and a big fella Cole Young now. This is another fella that I like. This is a talented shortstop, a really good young man out of Pennsylvania as Newt drops the hammer down and in. So Cole Young, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, North Allegheny High School. Plays for the Canes national team. You hear that a lot. He played for the Perfect Game Select Festival a couple of years back. Joanne and Rick are mom and dad. Blake is his older brother who's 23. Cole Young hits it hard, leaving his feet over there. Sabathia fires it to New, covering the back in time for the out. Really good play there. Well, Carson Sabathia, just not a big bat, but showing his mobility, making an accurate throw. And New, who is a big man, 6'5", 240, hustling over <laughs> to first base. This is a Rawlings gold glove defensive replay here. That's a good swing right there off of, off of that young, young man, Young. And uh, good swing, good play, diving. And to do the PFPs here without too much practice is pretty impressive. This is a really good timing play. Well done. Well, we need to probably pay a little more attention to Jaden Newt. He's had thrown five pitches, got two outs already here in the fourth inning. But he's really shown us his whole, whole toolbox so far. 94 fastball, had a 76 curveball, had an 83 slider. Last month at the PG National, he did not throw show that slider. He was a, just a curveball fastball guy, so he's working out his repertoire of pitches. And he's a two-way guy, too. I mean, this is a guy with big, big bat, has big bat, big power, can drive it out. He's dealing with Ryan Clifford now, who comes up empty. Clifford out of Raleigh, North Carolina, a Canes national team man. Amy and John are his parents, and he's a two-time gold medalist in a USA baseball uniform. Two-time Gatorade Player of the Year as well. Clifford. Chases that fastball from Newt. Jaden Newt, we hardly got to know you. You were incredible out there. 
Well, what a bright future for that big, strong fella. PG All-American. The 2021 Perfect Game All-American Classic is brought to you by Rawlings, the number one glove of pro players and the official baseball glove of Major League Baseball. Wexelman and Ronsley and Pence and Sutton and you were all hanging out together. Perfect Game All-American Classic. We're rocking and rolling, introducing talented athletes to all of you. So let's go to Montgomery, New York, and we'll let you get to know Caden and Dana. Don Bosco prep his team, his travel team, this artillery, and this is a Tennessee commit. The right-hander takes the rock, and he rolls. By the way, a very good football player, too. All-league punter for his high school team the last couple of years. David, tell us a little bit more about the young man. I, I'm, I'm sorry, by the way. He's not a Tennessee commit. He's a Kentucky commit. Sorry, Coach Mingione there. I jumped SEC schools on you. But tell us about him on the mound. Well, there's nothing really complicated here. We've got the big body, 6'5", 225. It's the standard fastball, curveball, changeup mix. He'll throw all three of the pitches, you know, at different places in the count. Fastball's been up to 95. So, again, just like a theme of developing here, there's it's very mature pitchers on the mound who can already throw secondary pitches for strikes, and it almost makes that 95 almost secondary to their whole package as a pitching prospect. And the Kentucky commit and the son of Fred and Amanda, and this is Adonis Guzman. We watched him catch out of Valley Cottage, New York, Boston College commit. As he swings through that one, one and the one the county said, I am excited to go to Boston College. I am in no way, shape, or form switching to the team that plays in the big leagues in Boston. I'm a <laughs> dyed in the wool Yankee fan. That's my team. So I'll have fun in Boston. The, the look he gave you when you asked him what his favorite team was growing up in the Bronx two blocks away from Yankee Stadium was priceless. David, you're really selling me down the river with the way you explained it. Like, <laughs> My whole thought is, like, and Hunter deals with all these young people, whether you're streaming and gaming, Hunter, on Twitch, but I thought, you know, everyone's so different these days. You can ask a kid in Atlanta, who's your favorite team? And he tells you the Dodgers, right? That happened <laughs> with Tamar Johnson. Guzman was shocked that I even asked him. I mean, it, it, it is pretty funny, and, and I know I, I got to play with Willie Calhoun, who was a diehard Giants fan. He was, like, asking me, what was it like to be a Giant when I was with the Rangers? And he was drafted by the Dodgers, and he was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And, and <laughs> he's like, you just got to figure it out. Here we go. So, uh, I mean, when you're a ball player, you'll play for any team, but I love the, the fandom as a young kid. So uh, that, that's a great story. He said growing up in the Bronx, and, and these are his words, folks, that he shared with us. He said we weren't always provided with the resources necessary to succeed, with quotes he put, whether that be equipment, facilities, trainers. Thankfully, my supportive parents did everything in their power. As he rolls that one foul, the final part of that thought, to get me where I need to be and help me continue to grow not only as an athlete but as a man. Those are the words of Adonis Guzman. 
There's a lot of heroes uh, behind the scenes of each one of these players, and it takes a it takes a village really to raise them and and to get them to where they are. And some of them, you know, grab life by the horns and and, and do it all themselves. But uh, a lot of the times, there's a lot of help. Dana rocks and fires with a breaking ball that skips in there. Jones doing everything he can to block that one up from behind the plate. Oldest brother. Cullen is in high A when we talk about Dana. He is in high A with the Padres organization. Ninety-four miles an hour, and it's up. And I always marvel at a patient hitter in an all-star game. Because you want to hit. But I love that they're patient and here it's a walk. They're starting, teams are starting to really value pitch discipline. And I know that, you know, the, the Giants and the Dodgers, two of the top in, in baseball right now, are two of the best in the world at it. And so it's starting to get looked at a lot differently than it used to. There's some big power in this frame. He is tied up that time, Dominic Hellman. We've showed you the parts of the ballpark that he has hit it into. He nearly knocked down the wall at PG National at the home of the Rays in Tropicana Field. That's the back wall of the building. As that one's high and inside. 2021 Herald Baseball Player of the Year. First team all Wesco. First team all area. He started all three years in high school as he heads into his senior year. David, this is a guy at this size that worked and worked. He worked so hard to go sub-760, and he did it. And then he went out and ran a 669, for goodness sake. He just didn't break it. But, yeah, I remember um, you talking to him and him saying, what, do, what are you working on your game? And he says, I need to get faster. I need to break seven seconds. I need to break seven seconds. And, uh, and he was successful. He set a goal, and he, he reached it. Fastball at 94, dots the outside corner. 6'6 six, six is booking. That's oh. the, for a big man. That's that's the, the tally ho. Let's go. I want to <laughs> ask Guzman and Jones. We saw Guzman do the little pudge action to first base, and we saw Jones one eight five to second. Who who wins the arm off here? Are they both with top notch to top notch? Uh, I think Guzman's going to win the, win the arm action or the arm strength. The the fascination with with Jones is just the the combination of size and quickness that goes into his. Let's take a peek at our Rawlings home run replay. We saw it earlier. It was Luke Heyman. He's headed to Florida. That ball was on the fast track to Florida. It was crushed. Danny Wexelman is down below with Luke Heyman. Guys, take it away down there. Luke, you put your team on the board to run home run. What pitch did you see, and how good did that feel? Um, it was 3-2 just sitting on a fastball, and luckily he threw one right over the plate that I could get a piece of in it. It felt good, you know. Um, you? We're in Petco Park, a great stadium, and just being able to do what I did just felt amazing, and hopefully we can get our team and get a W, E-Squad on top. We talk a lot about your skills behind the plate, but you've been working on your bat as well. What have you been doing to be able to do that at the plate tonight? Um, just trying to be more on time. Kind of been late a little bit lately, and just trying to be more on time and not pull off balls and stay through them. You said it was because of the mullet. Show us the mullet. Show everyone at home the mullet. Come on now. There it is. They got haircuts this week. <laughs> it's mullet power, guys. How do you like that? Luke, thank you. Thank you. Darren. <laughs> thank you, Danny. Those mullets, I got to be honest, folks. They're just awful, aren't they? <laughs> I couldn't disagree more. I knew you would stand <laughs> up for Mullets have them. homers in them. It's a great <laughs> mullet. Don't ever change. Oh, I knew Hunter would absolutely put the shield up for the guys. That's why I said it. That's always the inside <laughs> corner. trying to set me up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably throw you a pitch just to have you rock it at foul. But I set you up there, and I knew you'd do it. This is Shuby, Hunter's friend Shuby. Nolan Schubart out of Durand, Michigan. He's a Michigan commit. Went to junior national, did great things. Select festival, did great things. 15U Team USA guy. A mile high, but it's into the seats. And Dana's got a nice rhythm that with that over-the-top breaking ball. We've seen a lot of sliders so far, and this is one of the first real true over-the-top 12-6 type breaking balls. And he's gotten a good rhythm so far. I'm curious whether he's going to throw it to a left-handed hitter with two strikes on him. You know, 
Darren, I would love to see a guy hit a homer off a curveball and be like, yeah, I was really looking for a curveball and just whap out. And he almost he <laughs> takes a good swing at it right there. They're always looking for Who's looking for a curveball in this tournament? Well, that's such a great point by you. Dana working, dealing with Schubart. Dana loves watching Jacob DeGrom, said, I study him, I learn from him, I love his calm. I love how he always believes he's going to get the batter out. He said, by the way, Caden Dana, who's from Montgomery, New York, folks, David, his favorite MLB team is the Red Sox. Thank you, Caden, for kind of making me feel better about myself. Falls off there, breaking ball into the dirt. Schubart runs the count to two and two. Guys, it is a hammer, David. You said it. I love seeing a young pitcher throw the classic 12-6 curveball. Just don't see a lot. Not an easy pitch to throw. Or to command. I think a lot of times you see pitchers learn the slider. It's a perfect throw down. <laughs> All right, we see you, Jared Jones. We see you. He threw out one of his mates, Guzman, the catcher. All business. He went fastball. Jones gunned it down. Jared Jones, the rocket behind the plate. Perfect Game All-American Classic presented by Top Chops Beef Jerky. On MLB Network, David Ronsley, Hunter Pence, Danny Wexelman, Darren Sutton, and you. Jason Juquette is our producer, Marty Tarr is our director, and our wonderful partnership with MLB Network and the San Diego Padres to put this production together. And we're honored to be bringing you the best players in the country heading into their senior year in high school. David Ronsley wanted to talk about this man coming on the air. He's from Midland, Texas. His travel team, the Banditos, Ray DeLeon, runs that program. Oklahoma State is his commit, Chase Shores. Well, Chase Shores, I talked to him about the top of the show, how much he has improved. And what impressed me when he was back, you know, 50 pounds ago and throwing 80-83 was the athleticism with his size. He's kept that athleticism while adding a lot of strength. You're also going to see a little lower arm action that Hunter would make it real uncomfortable, I think, for a right-handed hitter to step in there against a young man who's going to probably be throwing mid-90s. It's not often you get a 6'8 guy and you're like, hey, I'm going to go with a little three-quarter action here. You want to get all of that leverage, all of that on top. But, uh, you know, according to you, it seems like he grew a, a, you know, two feet tall and 50 pounds in a month and a half. we got a whole new body to work with. Yeah, but then that's what it make, makes the athleticism and, and the quality of ability to repeat his delivery stand out to me because he's probably still going to get stronger. He's still 17 years old. Riley Stanford is his foe. Stanford out of Gainesville, Georgia. We shared with you a Georgia Bomber travel team guy. 
John Magliozzi runs that program. Chase Shores. Breaking ball, ground ball to the right side. Gobbled up and throw a little bit off the mark as it sails. Runner caught up in a bit of a rundown. Tag is applied by Mikey Romero if he got him. Yes, he did. Mikey got him. Initially a, a, a minor miscue, but things pulled back together for that West squad very nicely out there. Well, we're, we're, we're digging, we're digging. We got an error, and, and you, you got you to gotta be aware the the backup of the catcher right here is, is what's really good and uh, hustling all the way and uh, cleans it up. Looks like he, he's hearing about it from his teammates right now, like, Riley, what were you thinking? On the ground, another opportunity and a fine play that time. That one gobbled up and fired in time for the out. Gillen got that chance he wanted and takes advantage of it. And we've got another quick go inning going. Four pitches total, two outs. As Shores just throwing nice quality, low strikes in the zone and getting ground balls. Makes it look pretty easy. Well, David, when you talk about a guy and talk about a pitcher that's good, a lot of times it's going to be quick if they only get one half inning. So uh, that's a good start. Two, two up, two down. Can't get much better. That was Cam Collier, the reclassification Cam Collier, who's also very talented. There you go, what an inning. Hilton hits it right back to the big fella, Chase Shores. One, two, three. Chase, we hardly got to know you. He's headed to Oklahoma State. He's 6'8". By David's predictions, he'll be 7'2 by tomorrow. Beauty. This copyrighted telecast just presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Perfect game All-American Classic moving into the sixth inning. This is a two-way player. He's a shortstop. He's a second baseman, but he's also a pitcher. His name is Nas Mule, and the interesting thing about him too, David, is a man who when he pitches has touched the high 90s. He's the youngest man in this game as well. Not yet 17 years old, still a 16-year-old. Still 16 years old and 6'3", 205 pounds. So he's strong, he's young. You don't know, really know what that body's going to look like in another three or four years or maybe in his mid-20s when he's established himself, hopefully in the big leagues. This is a little bit more about what he has done, Hunter. Passaic Tech High School of Miami commit. And you can see exit velo and fastball velo both there. Yeah, the ball's coming out of his hand, kind of nasty. And as a right-handed hitter, you're you're uh, you're you got you got your work cut out for you. But you're gonna want to make sure he throws strikes. And let's watch that. What Hunter's talking about, and he does fire a strike. That first pitch right out of the gates at 95 miles an hour. This is Gavin Keelan, and Gavin 
Milton High School obviously got a lot of at-bats in the Iowa Spring League put on by Perfect Game. There's your 97. It's coming in hot. Yeah, and an outstanding student, really pure hitter. Is that one 99 miles an hour, 99 off the fingertips. Kind of running arm side right hand. We're glad we got a lefty up right here, but that is a that is coming. Again, 99 miles an hour. Folks, this is a shortstop who pitches as well. Not even, did you say he's 16 years old? Still 16. This is an electric athlete, and this is impressive to watch right now. Again, 99 goes in and out of the catchers. But Jared Jones is back there still working. Brady Neal will do some catching here in just a little bit behind him. I get the sense just from the body language. We saw these other pitchers who are full-time pitchers. This might be a time for a change-up or a breaking ball. I think we're just going to see cheese here from Nass. He shook off a breaking ball, David. And the fastball is high. Again at 99. That's ball four. Yeah, not quite as polished right now with the command. It looks like he's just throwing it as hard as he can. Hopefully he can get – maybe it's a feel thing. It's a timing thing. But uh, – Good at bat right there, and we got a, the West team's got a leadoff batter on. Quick visit to calm him down. You saw R.J. Austin come in and have a quick conversation. Here's Mikey Romero, the first of the Perfect Game All-Americans to be named because he's a local product. At 98 on the ground, there's one on the first, not in time. But he got it down off the end of the bat. As Hunter said, it's not only pitch that has great velo to it but it has movement late life and here he goes he gets a, a pitcher's best friend first pitch swinging bouncer right back to him and uh, you see the short stops the smooth hands and a lot of times you worry about a pitcher making that throw and he made it look easy here's Caden Martin talented football player there is a slider and a balk is called Runner moves up. And the West is still looking for one of those things that's not a walk or anything to get a runner on base that you knocked on wood, not a sarc you know, not a superstitious fella. I'll respect your request at this point. <laughs> I just wanted to see if the bait Not for much longer. Not for bait. much did longer, you notice? Did you notice? I was told some a little birdie oh, in my a ear. Birdie, told and, me you, about and you've it. been you've been playing it off. Interesting. I, I was told about it. I'm respecting my analyst right now, both my analysts who are very much jinx people, so I'll respect them. Well done by you though. You're showing as an announcer, ninety nine by the way, that you can tell the story without saying the words, according to Hunter Pence. Yeah, I, I don't have a birdie in my ear, but I've noticed uh, we're, we're deep in the game right now. We're in sixth. Uh. <laughs> I haven't, no, one, no one said a word. Caden Martin rolls that one foul again. The upper 90s. This is something, David. I mean, we want to talk about everybody involved in this game, but we have not seen in this event a pitcher just sit at 99. Yeah, that's the difference here. Sometimes we'll say he hit, he topped out at 99, he pitched in the mid-90s. No, Naz is sitting at 99 miles an hour. Makes you wonder if he might have another tick there, which has never happened in an All-American Classic. Slider kicks away. It's tough to deal with. Everything is firm. And you made a great point, David, that in an all-star game, which is this, it's tough to deal with pitches that you don't know what they're going to do. Mikey moves up to third base. Mikey Romero, that is. Caden Martin has played football on national TV. He's now playing baseball on national TV. Remember T. Martin, great football player, national championship, playing in the NFL as well. Looked like he got a commitment there on a pitch that dove down and away. Yeah, to me, the lo looking at, at Caden Martin, knowing that he's a high, high-level quarterback, that is an unlikely quarterback's body, though. It's got he's got such strength in his hips, such strength in his thighs. You know, it's, that's where he gets his baseball power from. But but so athletic, and he can run and has that strength. Hustling to the bag, and they were 100% set at getting to 100, and he just got there. That pitch was rolled out to the right side, 100 miles an hour. The play. Made on the first base side over there. And trotting to the bag. Big Ryan Clifford. Here's 100. 
there's 100. He, he gets the job done here, though, is you got to get that ball in play, get a run across the board. So they've scored a run without scoring one of those other things in, the, oh boy. in that column. But uh, we'll take, you know, the West Coast will take a run, get a little tighter ball game, and uh, now he's going to face his first right-handed batter. That one, ouch, bounces in there. He does face the righty. Let's introduce you to Ross Highfill. He's out of Madison, Mississippi. He'll play in the outfield as a backup, but he will catch. East Coast Sox, his travel team. Ross is a Mississippi State commit. Tina and Mike are his parents. Ashley and Lindsay are his sisters, along with Brooke. Ross rolls that one to the left side. Cutting on across, fielding and firing. Collier with the play there. And in time for the out. We'll tell you a little bit more as this game goes along about Ross Highfield. We will tell you that that man touched 100 miles an hour. Out a notch in one of those columns, the West team grabs a run. 3-1 to one the score in the perfect game, All-American Classic. Hunter Pence, David Ronsley, Darren Sutton, and you. Glad to have you with us. Ian Ritchie will go to work on the mound. This talented right-hander, love his spirit, love his competitiveness. Ian Ritchie, Jr. out of Bainbridge Island, Washington. Jeff Brown is his high school coach. He plays for that Canes national team and also the Sweets travel team. Eric Hollerback runs that squad. This is a UCLA commit. He is the son of Ian and Tori and the big brother of Dallas. And this is a guy, David, with a wipeout slider, but just, to me, a ton of command and poise. Your thoughts? Yeah, and the interesting part about that slider, which he, is his best pitch now, we saw him at the underclass All-American games two years ago, and he didn't even have a breaking ball. He was almost strictly fastball changeup, so it's been gone from... You know, a slider being a non-factor to being his best pitch. It's a nasty, go. nasty slider, one of the top in the class. But this young man also, 92, 94, maybe touching 95 at PG National. But during the spring, we uh, heard reports out of Washington that he was pretty steady, you know, mid to upper 90s the whole spring. So I'm not really sure what we're going to see here in terms of velocity. Brady Neal is his foe, a young man who's at the IMG Academy. Tallahassee, Florida is his home. He's an LSU commit, Jay Johnson will be his coach at LSU. PG Select Festival member as well for Brady Neal. And the first pitch, he cranks one up with a changeup for strike one. Hello, perfect game, All-American <laughs> Classic. Check out my 82 changeup. Love it. His third best pitch. Fastball buried it in, touched 93 miles an hour. For Neal at home, Corey is his dad. Kathy is his mom. And his brother Carson. Plays baseball at Valdosta currently. This is uh, a man on the mound who is driven as he drops that slider somewhere. <laughs> Wait. Uh, okay. Good pitch. Good pitch. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. 
I love the fact that he opened with the changeup and he's going to UCLA, the land of where changeups are made to flourish. Fastball, and he was ready for it. Brady Neal with a base hit. Takes advantage right here, gets himself another pitch, uh, and, and uh, drives the ball right up the middle, nice and easy. That was a good pitch. That was right on the corner and uh, finds a hole. Nice short swing right there, too. It's a good approach. And, Darren, I was surprised when you said Naz Mule was the youngest player in the class. I thought it was Brady Neal who just reclassified uh, as Cam Collier did. But uh, Brady Neal, also a 16-year-old. Eli Serrano, number 16 on that East jersey, goes to work. As we get to know Eli, we know he's at a Fuquay Varina in North Carolina. Pro 5 Baseball Academy is where he goes to school. NC State commit. And Eli did good things at the National. He ran a 6-7 through 91 from the outfield. He's come a long way, baby, from back in October of 2017. He was playing in a PG Super 25 event. Six feet tall back then, 130 pounds. An event in Virginia. He was all tournament, one of his first PG events. Sammy Serrano is his dad, who played at Stetson, played in the Giants organization, Hunter, for about four years. And uh, his mom played Division I basketball. Mom Cheryl at Stetson as well. Well, Serrano didn't, didn't make this All-American team. Yes, you said he had a good national, and he definitely did. He made the All-American team really the week before when he was the MVP of the WWBA 17-under championships, one of our, our most talented and prestigious events. Hit 419 with four homers and 12 RBIs. All four of those home runs coming in the playoffs. Gosh, he, he had four homers. Sorry, Hunter. He had four homers in that national tournament? Yeah. That's crazy. All in the playoffs against good pitching. Look at the life on that fastball. Literally had to be played on a backhand there. Ross High fills the catcher. And he swung at it. Uh, he looks really comfortable with the bat in his hands. There's a lot of Christian Yelich when, when Yelich is really healthy and lined up. Uh, very similar. It's a beautiful swing. That's a good move. Ian spends a lot of time and devotion in the car as you see the quick move here over to Ike Irish, who is at first. But Ian goes down to Portland and works with Kevin Gunderson, an outstanding pitching coach. But he's driving from Washington down to Portland. Parents make a lot of sacrifices. He's worth the time. Gets down there once a week if he can, working with a great pitching guru, Kevin Gunderson. So there's Highfield doing the work behind the plate, Ross Highfield. I feel he's having a, a great at bat here as a catcher. He caught that ball, backhand come that fastball, 94 fastball that had serious dive to it and handled it cleanly and saved a base uh, for his pitcher with that block of the low breaking ball. He's a Mississippi man out of Madison. Way out front on a changeup. This is not an easy play. All you could do to make that play. Charging, fielding, and firing Gavin Guidry out of Louisiana. So that's an infield hit. And one of those plays, if you don't if you don't get your exchange perfect and Guidry wasn't perfect with it, you really have no chance. Well, Gavin Guidry, a great story. The Nick Aidenhart Award winner last night. Lost 35 pounds with a pretty serious injury and illness last year. I mean, really serious. And also the devastation in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Two times storms ravaging through his hometown and he just got up and went to work i mean helped businesses open helped clean community folks his home was spared but uh, he's a great story here's rj austin this is another great story and a great young man this pg all-american chases a fastball a lively fastball rj out of atlanta east cobb astros his travel team he's a vanderbilt commit kianya and reggie are his parents, dad, of course, an NFL quarterback. Really good one, defensive coordinator right now and a head baseball coach at the high school level. And RJ, I think you'd call him a regular. If there was a punch card, he'd have it pretty full. You've seen him a lot. Oh, yes. He, he loves to play baseball. You know, his father was a football guy, but but he two brothers that uh, played one of, one of his brothers, a perfect game, All-American. 
and just somebody who loves the game. And just, we've talked about Tamar Johnson and his leadership and his, his personality. Well, I see Austin in the same way because he's, he's always around his teammates. He's always talking. He's always propping up, you know, his teammates and everybody here. Just a, a great personality on the young man. Broke his bat, popped up, right side. The play is made. Again, the slider is good. The changeup is good. But that fastball has that kind of life to do that to a bat. Yeah, it definitely wins that battle right there. He, he hasn't, you know, he's had a little bit. Of, he had a tough call first batter, and he had a, you know, killing the worms single. And then he breaks a bat here. See if he can get out of this jam. Reminds me a lot, Richie, of, uh, of Joe Kelly with the Dodgers. Um, just a similar presence, stance, haircut. Uh, the glasses maybe is what does it. Can you see that, David? Yeah. The personality, the personality is part of it. This is one of the fastest men in the United States, and I don't think I'm stretching it when I say Michael Gupton, who's out of Raleigh, North Carolina, fits that bill as he takes a breaking <laughs> ball for strike one. David, you're a scout. Please remind us what he ran the 60 in at the National. He ran the 60. The previous record at the PG National was 6-1-1. He twice ran a 5-9-6. It's different, and you were exactly correct. He ranks very high nationally in track events in his age group. 0-2 the count on Gupton. Hunter, here it is. Oh, my gosh. He is absolutely burning. Is that Tyreek Hill? or what? <laughs> <laughs> He is a track star, to say the least. North Carolina State commit. A quality young man, too, is that slider. That's a good take. Joyce and Van are his parents. Naomi, his older sis, and Van Jr., his older brother. He's a good student, a 4.0 in the classroom, but he's one of the fastest men in the United States. I've never heard of a 5.960 from a baseball player, so I'm hoping he puts something in play. I want to see this. We got the stopwatch oh, out, yes, David. We, Let's oh, go. Yes, we, we have the stopwatch <laughs> out. East Cobb Astros, Gupton's travel team. He's got a couple of runners out there. Fastball outside corner, not this time. We won't see him run. Beautiful riding pitch. A little comebacker dots the outside corner. Gupton goes down on strikes. And again, Highfield doing a really nice job presenting that ball to the umpire. Gets down low, gets below it. Everything moving, everything moving. Tucker Tolman, Columbia, South Carolina, Hammond School. FDB Philly scout team, he is an LSU commit. He was at the 14U Perfect Game Select Festival. Ashley and Jim are his parents. Dad played at NC State for four years. Changeup, it's a good one, but it misses outside. Father Jim has been a high-level college coach for at least three decades. I met him three decades ago. He was at South Carolina, was the head coach at Liberty for a long time, now at Middle Tennessee State. Let's get it to Danny Wexelman. She's got a, a quick thought on Ian Ritchie Jr. Danny? Yeah, I spent a lot of time with him, Darren, yesterday and learning a little bit about him. If you check out his wrist, he's wearing a camo wristband on his right arm. It was his grandma Momo's hair band. She passed away, but she was the one who went to all of his sporting events growing up, traveled as long as she could with him and told me how impactful she's been on him. And also, guys, you'll notice... He goes by JR, he told me, also, by the way, but he'll walk around the mound. He said he's angry on the mound. He talks to himself, and he wanted to be here. He didn't make it at the 14U Select Festival. He saw Corbin Carroll, Washington native, perfect game MVP. He saw him in this event. He said, I got to be here, too. Good stuff, Danny. Really good stuff. Great, insightful stories that you've shared with us. He's got great family ties. He talked about him honoring his grandmother, Danny, did. He deals with Tucker Tolman, breaking ball, ground ball. A couple of steps over to his right. In time for the out. That play made quite easy out there on the west side. Ian Ritchie, Jr., good stuff.
2021 Perfect Game All-American Classic is brought to you by Top Chops. Play hard, chew easy, and by Perfect Game, the largest and most respected independent scouting service in baseball. Danny Wexelman has got some really big names that she is learning baseball from, and so are we. Danny, take it away. Who'd you find? Darren, I have Flash Gordon, Greg Vaughn with me. Combined with these guys, seven All-Stars, 35 years of service in the big leagues. Flash, you're laughing. It's a lot, but it's invaluable to these guys, and you've spent so much time with them all year round. What do you love about this class? What makes you so happy about how good they are? Yeah, I mean, you get to see the, uh, their abilities on the stage, their tools. Uh, you get to be around them and actually get to learn more things about them personally and their families and you know where they come from in regards to the kids and their communities and how well they relate to that so baseball has always been a family for me and uh to get to see the youngsters get out there and play I mean, it's a dream come true i'm at a major league ballpark seeing some of the greatest players that's our future coming through couldn't be in a better place and greg for you this class is big they can <laughs> You're, la you're laughing, too. They're so big. They're so talented. Why are you impressed by the 2022 draft class? Because, I mean, just the advancement. I mean, how, how mature they are on the field. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, they've been going through this their whole life. You know, when me and Flash came up, you know, I got a call in the World Series, and you just went to do it. Now, you know, they prepare them. You know, they tell them what to expect. And, like I said, they're playing around the best players in the country, and these guys are big. I mean, I mean, everyone on here looks like they were on the Oakland A's when I was playing, you know what I mean? So, but no, and they're, and they're talented, you know what I mean? But, but you know, and my message to the guys are, you know, just always stay humble. Don't forget where you came from, you know, and you were blessed, and don't be afraid to bless somebody else, you know what I mean? But it doesn't cost anything to, to, to be nice and just stay humble and grounded. Guys, thank you so much for your time. A lifetime of knowledge between these two. Darren, back to you. Yeah, that's great stuff. Thank you, Danny. We're getting to know some unique players. Those guys, veterans and great insightful players. First of all, this is Mari Boyd with a bat in his hands out of Batesville, Mississippi, out of South Panola High School. He's an uncommitted athlete, a high-level talented athlete who plays for Ed Easley, the EBC travel team. And Lo Sanche is on the mound. Low as that one is rolled to the right side, induces the ground ball in time for the out. The play is made out there. So Low is a unique story, David. He's originally from Curacao. He resides in Pembroke Front Pines, Florida. But this is a pitcher, David, that effectively throws with both hands. Effectively, yes. You just saw a 95 mile an hour uh, fastball, a couple of them to the first hitter that he threw right handed. Now St. Che coming up to face the left-handed hitting Jackson Holiday is going to be throwing left-handed. Let's see what he brings to the plate from the other side. Low St. Che drops a breaking ball that's just a little bit high. We've seen Jackson Holiday several times. And Holiday takes up and in. Low, a great story, certainly. He was at the Little League World Series as a shortstop in 2016. He has been showing who he is as a both-handed pitcher. Jarina is his mom. Ando is his dad. Jackson with a big cut, and he fouls it off. When you asked Sanchez about baseball, he says, my grandfather and dad played baseball. My grandfather, really well-known left-handed pitcher in Curacao. Dad, a great catcher. Played in the Netherlands professionally. Mom played softball at a high level as well. He's a classy kid, too. Breaking ball, and it's a ground ball. Charging on in to make the play of that time. At second base is Austin, the Vanderbilt commit. Two outs. Well, I think the closest thing we've ever had in an All-American Classic to St. Che and his two-handed ability, you remember Carlos Cortez? Yes. Who, who played second base right-handed and played outfield left-handed. And... Uh, it, and, and had to know what position, you know, he would bring the right-handed mitt, left-handed mitt, but he was completely, you know, ambidextrous with his throwing. He didn't pitch, but fundamentally, I mean, have you ever heard of that before, throwing right-handed from one position, left-handed from the other? Never heard of that before. I've seen one other both-handed pitcher, and uh, he, he was in the big leagues for a little bit with the, with the, with the Giants, actually. Well, Pat Vendetti. Yeah, Vendetti. Yeah, that's who it was. I faced him one time in a spring training game. That was interesting. A lot of sliders, side army from both sides. But we haven't seen 95 from a both-handed pitcher. 
Yeah, and that's what really separates Sinche is the fact that he can come out and throw mid mid nineties uh, right handed. If he was only a right handed pitcher, you know, he he belongs in this game just at that. But the the talent that he shows from the left side, I mean, eighty eight with a, a big sweep and breaking ball. That's that's somebody who can pitch left handed at the next level. It was ninety four just off to the plate to the talented Jason Jones. We've seen Jones a couple of times, and this is a high energy, great spirited young man. Fastball, that one hits the corner and the count two and one. Jones says, and I quote, my mom inspires me as a person, a student, and an athlete. She pushes and encourages me to be the best me, he put with quotes around it. She challenges me and she works really hard. My work ethic comes directly from her. So my dad has been a great influence athletically. Swing and a miss. Lo sent you a great story. Young man out of Curacao. Left-handed and right-handed, right? I mean, here is left-handed. Buries the fastball in. Here is right-handed, mid-90s. Only at the Perfect Game All-American Classic. game it's like you knew so hunter folks on pgtv that are watching i'm respecting the fact that we're not talking about what's going on we're because talking if this about were a, it. if this were a big league game the place i used we're to work just, just recently it. i would absolutely be saying it there's some interesting going things going on in the pitching department for the east we'll just say that we're glad you're hanging out with us on perfect game tv by the way david you're encouraging me not to mention what's going on right i'm i'm going with with, with my partner here on this one well, all I can say is that so there's been tired the way he just said that. <laughs> there's been only that was passing the buck is what it was. Wow. I'm going to talk about the pass. There's been one no hitter in all time at Petco Park, and it was Tim Lincecum, and I happened to be in right field while he did it. 150 some pitches. Okay. Okay. He just said the words, by the way. No, I didn't say anything about <laughs> this current game. I'm saying in the past, <laughs> and, it's, and, been, it's only happened once. And, and didn't you make the, every every Made one of those play. games has one great defensive play? Not everyone. I, Lens come through one against the Padres in San Francisco where there was literally no good play. He just just got them. All right, All we're, right. we're told we have to wrap now. He said the words. No. Jackson Cox goes to work at the All-American Classic bottom half of the seventh inning. Glad to have you with us on the MLB Network. Perfect game, All-American Classic. Here is the big fella. Jax, as he is known by his mates, out of Tootle in Washington. Tootle in Washington, my apologies. I got it right the second time. Right-handed pitcher is high school Tootle Lake High School. Jerry Johnson, the head coach. Abe Ruiz, his travel coach. He plays for that great Trotsky program. Where is he headed, by the way? Coach Waz is going to get him. Hunter, you love Coach Waz at Oregon. He's an Oregon commit. Yeah, and, and Oregon had a great year last year. They fell short just a little bit to LSU, but uh, I am sure he's going to have great coaching out there in Oregon for sure. The Ducks. And with Jackson Cox, we're going to see a very, very live arm. Was up to 96 at the PG National, but what he really did at Tropicana Field was spin the ball. Threw some breaking balls, 3,200, 3,100. RPMs and it passed the eye test along with the uh, the track man test But uh, he's gonna bring the heat and but I'm really looking forward to seeing the spin Well bear just unloaded it. He's swinging a miss round one, but he let him know that uh, if he connects it's going far Hands out front nicely Jared Jones with a base hit into left field and it's one thing to have the body leak a little bit, but when the hands stay back, 
They pay dividends. Bear with a base hit out of Marietta, Georgia. Well, when, yeah. when we saw the PG Tech earlier, they talked about the energy transfer from his arms to his hands. That tells me that his hands are such an important part of his swing, and you saw how well he used them there to, uh, to hit that breaking ball. And that's what we talk about with creating time. Like, if you watched his barrel plane there, it went through the zone for a long time. It, it kept going forward, kept going forward, just like off the tee. Dealing with Cole Young, we spoke about Cole earlier. Enjoyed getting to, to know him a, a lot better at the Perfect Game National Showcase. A Pittsburgh PA young man. Team made it to the state finals. They were just glad to be back playing in the Pennsylvania State Finals, having a season again this year. Brother Blake, he names as one of his, his great inspirations, is Mr. Young. Very serious, very focused in there. Look at that. Shh, it's like a library in there. The bat looks really comfortable in, in Young's hands. He got robbed his first at bat, but man, it just everything looks like completely aligned and, and connected when he swings. And this is very much a, a two-way prospect. You know, we've been talking about his hitting, is the performance to back that up. But this is the one shortstop that the perfect game scouting staff thinks has the best chance to stay at shortstop if he were to reach the big leagues. Well, that's a heck of a pitch right in on the knuckles. Cox put it exactly where he wanted to. Just a little bit of late two-seam run to it. Mr. Cox is the son of Julian Tug. And the big brother to Connor. Fastball slider, curveball, changeup. He said, my changeup is the one that I'm working on the most. And a baseball somehow appear magically. Two and two, the count. We're glad you're hanging out with us tonight. This is all sorts of fun. As that one jumps up and away, three and two the count. And they're talking about Bobby Freeland. There he is. How do you say that city in Washington? Tootle? Tootle. 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 <laughs> Want to remind everyone, those of you that are in Tootle and wherever you are, on MLB Network's Monday and Tuesday night baseball. Big batch from the NYC take on the big man of the ATL, Yankees and Braves. Then they go at it again the very next night on MLB Network's Monday and Tuesday night baseball, live at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock out in Tootle. I will tell you, because I looked it up, Toodle is probably the smallest hometown of any of the 60 players. They're watching, yes. they're watching their uh, young prodigy here, Big Cox, throwing uh, some good fastballs. Got nobody out. Runs on first and second, yeah. huh? Yeah, Toodle, very rural area, right in the, in the shadow of Mount St. Helens, actually, down the southern part of, of Washington. Well done, David. That's well done right there. He brought something pretty big league. He, he's got a drive to do a lot of stuff. He actually drives 70 miles each way to one of his training facilities. A snap throw. That one skips not too far away. As we've talked about the great collection of catchers with Moore, Guzman, Irish, and Highfill on the other side for Gonzo's team. If you're just joining us, it's that Gonzo. World Series hero, Luis Gonzalez. So Jacob played in this game a couple of years ago. Tripled in this game, David. Plays in the Giants organization now, Gonzo's son does. Ryan Clifford fouls a two-seamer back to the screen. When you ask Cox about who guides him, who he loves to watch, it's Max Scherzer. Gonzo, loving to see the man out on the mound. He, he'd love to see his team put a notch in one of those columns that Hunter was talking about. They can't do it while they're on defense. So you no, know, I know they can. Maybe a goose. I understand egg. that. But 
the a fascinating thing for me, and every time I, I know Luis Gonzalez hit so many homers and won the World Series, but I always thought it was crazy that someone bottled up his gum and sold it for like some a That's ridiculous right. amount of money. And I could only think about the bubble gum after you hit a walk off homer or walk off single to win to beat the Yankees. That's right. That's a good mention by you. I had forgotten about that. That be, his gum became very very famous. Did it go up in value now, or is it down in value from its original price? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I haven't checked in on that lately. I think I'm going to forget this immediately after we get done talking about it. Bubble gum. You didn't hear that? No, I didn't. So he had gum in his mouth when he hits the walk-off to finally beat the Yankees, and I think it was 2001-ish. Yes, yes. And uh, the Diamondbacks win the World Series, and he jumps up, and he does the yeah. whole thing, and bubble gum comes flying out of his mouth, and someone bottles it up and sells it for, like, tens of thousands of dollars. Oh, jeez. Roman Anthony. Down at the bottom of that bat as he goes to work out of Stoneman Douglas in Florida. Takes just off the plate. He lists Stephen Cardulo as someone who inspires him, and here's why. He walked on at Florida State and became an All-American. Drafted in the later rounds, made it to the MLB with the Rockies. He said, he inspires me because he's a guy who refused to never give up and look at him living his dream. Those are the words of Roman Anthony out of Parkland, Florida, the old miscommit. It's fun to see some of these kids get into a jam like this and see how they respond. And dialing it back in is Cox right here, making some good pitches. Another good one right there. Yeah, he put it. He put himself in with those 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 two strikes on fastballs. Put him in a himself in a position to go back to the pitch. I think he really wants to throw now, and that's that high spin rate slider. A quick pitch to bouncing ball steps on it, comes home with it. Nice play made at home plate, dug out. Oh, but he's got got underneath the tag. Just snuck in there. What a heck of a play by Ike Irish to make that play on a hop. Sabathia turned and fired at home. Well, Gonzo's gonna come out. But conversation. Well, he makes the play right here, makes a good throw. Incredible catch and a oh, great it. tag. They're calling for the headphones. Gonzo can't believe it. He's coming out. We're arguing in an all-star game. Never seen it before. <laughs> Letting him have it. Get, the umpire's getting booed. And you saw Jones. He was kind of smiling over there like, I guess I'm safe. Yeah, I made it. Gonzo's going to go and... There's something you don't see in an all-star game very often either, the, the visit to the mound by the manager. I think he's going to make a move, Gonzo is. He's a showman, too. I mean, I love it, Gonzo. A little bit of a showman on this one. He's going to make the move. I love it. They're competing out there. Jackson Cox, what a bright future he has ahead of him. The young man who is headed to Oregon. Had a great defensive play behind him. And uh, a nice dig at the plate and a nice tag, by the way, made by Ike Irish. Cox heads toward the dugout. Look forward to seeing as his future unfolds. Jackson Cox. You know, we talked about the man who was about to hit earlier, Tamar, and who he is and how talented he is, Tamar Johnson. Well, earlier when he won the Home Run Derby Championship, yeah, they're, they're bringing the camera out to take a look at it. Now, wait a minute. You can't really do that. That's not really fair. <laughs> this is great stuff. Hunter, I know you previewed this with us before the game. I'll let you talk about what you saw as he won the title. Uh, well, the story that I heard is that he had to hit a homer in his last two pitches, and uh, he does that, and then he walks it off with a third home run in a row with a little bit of flair, and this is the earlier this morning. We're talking about 5-8, 5, eight, five nine winning the home run derby and these are some big boys so he's definitely got the power he's got the swing and uh he, he's a hitter he went inside of the pg tech cage recently and david i know you're going to help us with this because there's a lot to like about the numbers the advanced numbers and that kinetic chain the arm to hand his best energy transfer 91 mile an hour exit velocity but that kinetic chain david ground all the way up what did you see in that well, with, with Tamar, you, you see how he's built. He's built low to the ground. He's got that strength in his, his thighs and, and his hips. And, and you know, we, we know that the ideal swing starts low and works up. We see a lot of hitters now who have that top-down swing. 
but a hitter like Tamar Johnson at that size isn't getting generate, you know, getting his power from from a rotational upper body swing. He's driving it with his hips, um, using those big muscles of your core to drive your bat speed, and that's where you see the big power from the small package. Hey, by the way, this is a man with all kinds of power. This is a man that is an elite football player too. He's a left-handed pitcher and an outfielder, Robbie Snelling. He's out of Reno, Nevada. His dad is Jim, great coach. Mom is Lacey. Dad played football at Nevada. Uncle played at Boise State, Tennessee Titans. But this is a guy, David. This is another guy. He's great in the classroom, 4.2 GPA. They can basically pick a sport. I mean, he's that kind of a talented player. He can lay a tackle on you in the backfield, too. Yeah, and he was committed to a long time for Stan to Stanford to play both ways. And, and, and what he said when he decommitted from Stanford was, I can play football at Stanford. I can play baseball at Stanford. I can do Stanford-level ac academics, but I can't do all three at the same time because they all require so much hard work. There just isn't the time of the day, really, to do it. There's the desire to do it, but there just isn't the time. Doesn't look like they have baseball uniforms big enough for him. He definitely <laughs> still has his football pads on. He's, this guy is jacked. Yeah, and that's different, you know, especially a pitcher. When we see two-way players, we're, we're looking at running backs. We're looking at quarterbacks. You know, we're looking at defensive backs. Robbie Snelling, that's a legit linebacker body. And that one kicks away a run, comes on down, and scores this time. As that one kicked free, and that allowed an opportunity for Cole Young to come on down and score, the Pennsylvania native. Just handcuffed him. Yeah, that's a matter of the catcher not having ever caught Snelling before because um, that pitch is lively. It's it's 93 miles an hour. It's getting on him fast. Luis Gonzalez pulls his infield in. It's definitely one of the toughest things, though, catching all of these guys you've never caught before. You have no idea how it's coming out because uh, those aren't really in the dirt. Oh, baby, what a breaking ball. Had some depth and side-to-side -side movement. Yeah, Snelling's been up to 97. He isn't consistent up in that range, more a 91-94 guy. But the breaking ball is his best pitcher. It has been in the past, and we see another one there. Charging, fielding, turning around and making the play. And that one skips a little bit further away than they wanted to. That's hard to take that momentum and turn and fire a strike that time. That's just a, that's a tough play to make that time for Jason Jones. You get to see it again. And Jones going full speed to home plate to, to turn across your body and, and throw basically backwards. A very hard uh, skill. And Jones, a career shortstop, he probably hasn't had to really make that play before. Single an RBI that time. Here's Sal Stewart again. Young man out of Miami, Westminster Christian. Field backs up again, and we get to watch this talented football player play as a baseball player, and it's fouled off. Stewart had one of the most impressive swings I saw in the last three days. My thing, I love watching batting practice, and so every chance we get to watch these guys take batting practice, we were at USD on, on Friday. They're getting, they've been on planes today. They're just getting loose and everything. Like he puts the ball two thirds up the way up the hitter's eye at USD, which is a poke, believe me. And uh, I'm just like, oh, I didn't know South Stewart had that kind of power because he did it easy with this, a casual batting practice swing. Five-star national, his travel team. Coach Wright, his travel coach, as Sal takes a fastball, 92, just off the plate. Something pretty impressive is he stepped in the, during the MLB home run derby. They had it in between. I'm not sure if it was on television, but him and um, Sal Stewart and, and Jared Jones were hitting absolute tanks. Uh, not quite as consistent as the big leaguers, but they had big league pop, and it was awesome to watch. So, yeah, I've seen that power, and he has a great approach here. All these at-bats are, are, are quality at-bats at every approach to these pitches. He's a pro amateur player. I mean, that's a most respectful way I know to put it. He's been playing at these events for a long time. David, he was one of the first 14U Select Festival athletes. He's good in the classroom. He takes care of all the other stuff he's supposed to. He said, that's the most incredible experience Hunter I've ever had in front of 49,000 people. As that one 
Sails up and away. As a matter of fact, here's his exact words. This summer I was fortunate enough to play in the Colorado All-Star Game as well as the Derby. Incredible experience. I was able to be around great players, best in the game, as well as hit in front of 49,000 fans. You know what that's like. Well, I got to watch him do it. Uh, <laughs> it was pretty spectacular. The Home Run Derby is a different show altogether. I remember when uh, when Bobby Witt, who's the, the one of the top prospects in, in the game now, a perfect game All-American, uh, of course, a few years ago, and that's when we had the uh, event in Washington. They had the uh, home run contest in Washington, and we talked, Darren and I talked to him after that and asked him what it was like, and he said, I have to be, I'm serious, I was scared to death. I'm hitting in front of 50,000 people, and that's the son of a big leaguer who played more baseball than anybody in the class, and he was like, wow, that was scary. No matter who you are, that's intense, and it, and it's what a, spe a special opportunity for a high school kid and a high school athlete. Got him to chase a fastball up and away. Snelling turns that one loose at 92 miles an hour with late jump, good four seam jump at the plate. Here he is. That's tough to lay off of when lefties can really hit that high part at the top of the zone and uh, just blows it by him and. Uh, he doesn't, he's not happy he chased that one, but it, it looks good at the eye level. It's a good pitch. And the reason why, you know, with the with the increased use of analytics and in this great game, that high spin rate fastball that stays up in the zone. Yeah, the elevate. And, and, and something that's cool to watch with Snelling right here is watch how he dips. So, so he does his windup, and he gets kind of low, and then he, he lets it ride. So the high fastball is going to be even more deceptive than usual. It's kind of like the little Kershaw dip. See how he's throwing from kind of low. I like it. The Kershaw dip. Yeah, Kershaw has a hitch if you ever watch him pitch. See how he gets kind of low and, and then he's like releasing it. It's almost like that ball's going up. So it's deceptive on where it actually is. That's the spin rate, the, the spin rate and the elevate. Dip and drive. As he fires a fastball in there with that Kershaw dip. Love it, Pence. Hunter Pence, by the way, is the man you're listening to. David Ronsley as well. My name is Darren Sutton. Danny Wexelman is down inside the dugouts at the Perfect Game All-American Classic. Buried a fastball in. There's not a lot of comfortable swings on Robbie Snelling's fastball here. There must be, be some deception for the hitter. It's getting on him. The ball's lively. And hey. none of them are down the middle of the plate. They're all on edges. I mean, Irish is having trouble catching it, so it's obviously it's coming out kind of nasty. Uh, you got the one little chop, the chopper that you know kind of squeaked through. Maybe it was a hit because it's just placed right, but no one's getting really good good swings off on him just yet. Yeah, and Ike Irish has caught serious velocity. He's Brock Porter's high school catcher back in Michigan, and Porter, you know, upper 90s. He lets that one travel and drives it deep to left field toward the wall. It goes into the corner. That one rolls around. And into second he goes. Tamar comes on down. He will score into the corner. That baseball went, and it's a double. It is a double. Come out and make that call as it disappeared. Well, we spoke too soon. We get a good a curveball over the plate, and uh, he makes a real nice swing on this. This is drives it over here and right down the line. Beautiful lefty on lefty, too, and gets the ground rule double to bounce over the wall. Yeah, that's a 16-year-old left-handed hitter <laughs> hitting a quality, quality That break. was painted. Yeah, that was not a hanging curveball. That's That kid can hit right there, young Neal. What a swing. Serrano takes a fastball over the inside corner for a strike. The NC State commit. Roams around that outfield, standing six feet, six inches tall as he takes one just off the plate and in. One ball and one strike to count. They were talking about it earlier. Visit perfectgame.org. Check out an athlete that you see tonight and understand that PG Tech Cage and the way you can evaluate your game. True, true brand new, new heights of development. You take part in a PG event yourself, a showcase, that's going to be part of your development. Part of your profile, the one two. And we just rolled out the PG Tech Cage and the, the K Vest and everything at the beginning of this year, as you said, it showcases. And I've, I've spent almost every weekend at a showcase, and it has been so smooth the rollout of this technology. Um, you know, the, the P 
PG Tech people are doing such a great job. It's an invaluable part with what's going on in baseball today of hitters learning what they're doing at the plate, learning their own swings. Three and two, the count. Fastball, he lost him. Hey, by the way, don't forget the MLB Ballpark app. It completes your next visit to the ballpark. Buy and manage game tickets, redeem offers, access exclusive content, and much more. Now, download the Ballpark app today. Gonzo's coming out to talk with Snelling. Last time I went to a game, Dodgers Angels, Dodgers Stadium, not too long ago. Had some great tickets. They were on my phone in the Ballpark app. I knew where to go get a Dodger dog. I knew where to go get the great Sunday and the helmet, all because of the Ballpark app. I'm just saying. I was sitting up in the booth first part of the year calling <laughs> games. I didn't get to use the ballpark app. I've now used it. It's really cool. I'm going to take your you word have, for you it. You ever have a Sunday and a helmet? Uh, when I was a kid, that was like my favorite thing. I, and I collected the helmet, kept it for forever. Sunday and a helmet's a good one. Yeah. I haven't had much ballpark food. I heard it's been upgraded a lot since oh, I was it's a bigly. kid. Oh, it's bigly, yes. Oh, since, yes, since you were a kid for sure. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a dog and a beer ever. I always like the... Uh, the cookies with the ice cream in the middle, too. I don't know if I can eat them as much anymore, but when I was a kid. I like that. What are the go-tos now, Darren? Well, it's still a hot dog. I mean, it's still a hot dog, but the pretzel is now mammoth. It's as big as your glove. Is a I hot mean. dog a sandwich? Oh, absolutely it is. Yeah, 100% it is. Hey, by the way, if you're just catching those kind of insights, here's some insights for you about this game. Like, what is this game as we share the All-American Classic with you? Understand the players. The amount of players that have gone to the major leagues, the first-round picks, and it's names you've heard of, all the names you've heard of, Posey, McCutcheon, Harper, Bryant, Freeman, you see Porcello. That's this MVP-type developmental tool as R.J. Austin takes low. Gonzo finished with his conversation. A little bit more work back there to do for Ike Irish. In fact, Darren, we watched the, the Phillies-Padres game right before this game started. Phillies victory, but uh, Ryan Har uh, Bryce Harper in that game, Ryan Weathers, former PG All-American pitched, Eric Hosmer, perfect game All-American over there at first base. We had Zach, you know Archie Bradley and Zach Wheeler who didn't pitch today on the Phillies roster, Andrew McCutcheon who you saw there, you know MVP, perfect game All-American. So the rosters were Gosh. just littered with perfect game All-Americans. That's cool. That's really, really cool. Trent Grisham as well with the Padres. Of yes, all America. I, I left Trent out. You can't hog them all, David. You're like an encyclopedia next to me. Breaking ball. Boy, it's a good breaking ball. I mean, it's really got late break to it. I'm liking R.J. Austin's swings right here. This is a good at bat. He's got himself in a good count, and he's taking one, one dangerous hack uh, for the strike. You like it for a reason, Hunter Pence. Into center field. He'll play the pair. On the ground. Hit it firm. Use the big part of the ballpark. Ball trickles away toward that dugout. R.J. Austin under the microscope of Mr. Pence. You liked what you saw. And that ended up being a beautiful piece of hitting. Yeah, he was kind of getting on the timing. And, you know, Snelling's throwing a lot of pitches in this inning. Uh, and he, you know, that was that was painted on the corner right there. But he was just kind of locked in and seen everything. Was ahead in the count and got a fastball and got a barrel to it right up the middle. Driving in a couple runs. Good base running also move. He was going to be on second regardless of where that throw was, but sat and waited while the center fielder made his decision. You got your stopwatch, David? I have my stopwatch. All right, Michael Gupton is hitting, folks, out of Raleigh, North Carolina. The sub 660 twice at Perfect Games National Showcase. Breaking ball, little roller. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, I'm just, I'm just going to say this not to say that set Michael Gupton up for something but the fastest time I've ever got home to first for a you know a teenager a high schooler was Byron Buxton at 387 okay so 387 is sort of at least on my stopwatch and I have a pretty cynical stopwatch breaking ball froze him that time that's frustrating for me wanted to take a whack at it I'm telling you that breaking ball from Snelling plays football baseball what a future he's got
What an amazing partnership with Diamond Kinetics. Here's our Diamond Kinetics game summary. The hit column does not have a notch in it for the West squad. There's a reason why. Let's go. And Ferris and Smith and Barriera, the athletic Barriera there with the breaking ball. And then the big fella, Caden Dana, was having fun on the mound. Number six on the back of his jersey. Nas Mule lived at 98 to 99 and touched 100. That's the one where he threw 100. And Gerangelo St. Ju threw right-handed and left-handed. And again, that hit column is very lonely. Very, very lonely. And I don't know which of those seven pitchers was the most impressive. They all were, Good, weren't obviously. They? But I, if you'd asked me to, hey, what's been the most impressive to you, I'd throw up my hands and just say all of them. Defer. This is Hayden Murphy. He'd love to jump into the fun. He's out of Chula, Georgia. He's an Auburn commit. And that one rides up and in, just a little bit out of the zone. MLB All-Star game. He took part in that. And the talent there, he'll tell you, I'm a low mid-90s arm. Good run on my fastball slider with a lot of sweep. As he pours a fastball to Dakota Jordan over the outside corner. Let's get to know Dakota just a little bit as he takes this opportunity. He's out of Canton, Mississippi. Doolin's Dodgers, his travel team. He's a Mississippi State commit. And six times he's been an all-tournament team member. As we're meeting two guys at the same time, Murphy and Jordan. David, what can you tell us about Jordan? Well, you mentioned he's going to Mississippi State. He's going to Mississippi State on a two-way scholarship. Tremendous football player, tremendous baseball player. And you saw the graphic on six foot two twenty-five. He also ranks among the probably top ten fastest players in this game with a 6'4", 60 to his credit. So there's power, there's speed, and obviously high, high-level athleticism. So Mike Leach is waiting for him, too, to play football at Mississippi State. Chris Limonis, he will wait, the College World Series champions. Big swing. He fouled it off. You might remember, he goes to this young man, Jackson Academy. If you really follow the game and the prospects, Jackson Academy is where a young man by the name of Jerrion Ely went a couple of years ago. PG All-American, like this man. He went to Ole Miss. He's a couple of years ahead. He's a star player on that football team now. Chases up and in. Ely heck, could win a Heisman Trophy over the next couple of years. He's oh, yeah. that special as a running back. He's a guy you're, you're going to see play in the NFL, no doubt. He held the uh, the 60 record the National Showcase before <laughs> Michael Gupton obliterated it. But, yeah, you see that kind of speed on the football field as well. And, and of course, Dakota Jordan heading in the same direction. Ike Irish now, Hudsonville, goes to work. Michigan man, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's Prep, Auburn commit. As that one dives down and in. Artillery squad, his travel team. Kelly and Jeff are Ike's family. Grandpa had some time in the minor leagues with the Indians. Dad with the Blue Jays. Good pitch, fastball in on his hands at 90 miles an hour. Long run and a nice job. Sticking with it, putting that one away, ranging into foul territory. Roman Anthony with the out there in left field. Well, Hayden Hayden Murphy, you know, is, has has the makings of a quick inning this inning. He played in the 14U Festival in 2018 as a primary infielder. So he's a young man who's converted uh, to a full-time pitcher, you know, over his high school career. As we see Clint Hurdle make his way out to the mound. They're sharing some time late in the game, making sure everyone gets a chance to pitch and play. Well, that was good stuff from Murphy. I mean, really good stuff, David. I mean, just strong. Yeah, and and and, and he's just he's one of the more projectable pitchers in this class. I mentioned the very high-level athlete who's still really converting to a full-time pitcher. You know, that young 6'3", 185 body. And, uh, you know, it was, what, 90, 93, nice breaking ball. Nice calmness on the mound. Allow us to introduce you to Jacob Miller. He takes on this assignment. Jacob will go to work, this right-hander, out of Baltimore, Ohio, Liberty Union High School. Jim and Dana are his mom and dad, dad and mom, I should say. Siblings, Alicia, Andrea, and Austin. This is Jake. He plays for the Canes national travel team, and he is committed to go to Louisville. And you saw he and his catcher, Brady Neal, 
you know, communicating a bit there. You could almost imagine Brady and Neil go, okay, what am, what are you going to be throwing? Because these guys haven't worked together. I'll tell you what he's going to be throwing, Brady. He's going to be throwing curveballs. He might be throwing some of the best curveballs you've ever seen, too. This is, a, this is a primary curveball guy. He'll be up to 94, 93, but the curveball is his pitch. Hey, Drew Jones, we're going to put you under the watchful eye of Diamond Kinetics. And it's been interesting with his DK numbers. Textbook power hitter swinging a tax to ball on a slight upward angle. You can see there, 15 degrees plus. That's going to elevate the ball at contact. 71 mile an hour barrel speed will create exit velocity in the 100% category, 100 plus mile per hour category. And a 27 score on impact momentum tells you he can swing a big bat that does real damage. When you dissect his swing with Diamond Kinetics, you understand why he's tearing it up this summer and projected as a power hitter at the next level. David, definitely impressive. He's going to be fun to watch over the next couple of years. Yeah, Diamond and he, Kinetics. And he doesn't swing like a power hitter. It's it's a it's a tall stance. It's a, it's a quick, quick, short swing. But you mentioned the, the angle uh, that he has. You see the 10 home runs. I think he had 16 in the spring in high school. So a young man who, who has a fluid swing. But I love that 15-degree launch angle there. And it's not something that you've had to teach him at the next level. That comes naturally to him. Perfect game stats in tournament play. Gavin Guidry. You see Gavin hit. Young man out of Lake Charles in Louisiana. And a breaking ball from Miller. He comes up empty on that one. I believe I mentioned that breaking ball. Yes, you did. That will not be the last one you see. So, David, you're saying all right, one fastball, two slider, three curveball. Just three, three, a lot of threes. Yeah. There it is. And Miller st struck out 143 hitters this spring in 60 innings. And when, oh. I, when, I see, <laughs> when I see numbers like that in high school, the first thing I think is breaking ball. You'd be ready for that fastball at 95. He dropped the head on that one. Yeah, Gidry was looking for that one. I think he figured, hey, I've already seen two curveballs. He's got to throw me a fastball sometime. Not necessarily as a pitcher. If, if they're hitting your fastball backwards, they're they're probably looking for a fastball. You can you can guess that. Yeah, that was agree. ninety-five miles an hour. That was not a, a high fly ball center field. Gavin Gidry will trot through that one. We'll get to know him as this game goes along. Gavin Gidry. Out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. So much is depth to this young man. What a bright future for the LSU commit. I don't know if we're allowed to have class favorites, but I have one. Austin Henry takes the rock and he rolls. He's from Del Rapids, South Dakota. This young man, this 2022 grad who loves baseball because his dad still plays in amateur men's leagues around town in South Dakota. 
has a spin rate, David, of comfortably over 3,000. There's an athleticism. He's a bright, bright future. And this young man is a Wichita State commit, Mid-South prospects, and also playing traditional American Legion baseball this summer. Now, we get to argue. We can have two. Both of us can have the same favorite yes. player. Now, I, lo I love Austin. I love the potential there, the athleticism. I love that he's from Del Rapids, South Dakota. And all those things you said about small-town baseball, you know, his family is living it. Yeah, his dad gets out and plays, plays all the time. His dad, Nate, his mom is Tammy. His foe right now is Tucker Toman, and Tucker Toman takes a fastball that is high. Tucker Toman has that look in his eye, like that hitter look. Like, I'm about to, I'm about to hit something. I, I love his, his attitude, and I love he's just got the hitting face. If there's a hitting face out there, he's got it. Nice. Good swings, good approach. As he claps his hands to get a little dirt there, Hunter Pence. Tucker's out of Columbia, South Carolina as an LSU commit. This going to the 14U Select Festival for Perfect Game, one of his great accomplishments. Ready for a fastball. I'm going to tell you this right now. Just a man who has been on predicting good looks and good at bats, Hunter. Nice job. That's twice now. He had the hit. He had the hit face on. I could see it in his Goodness. eyes. And when, when you see someone that's you know really good at what they do, there's a different look in their eye. And he just you know he came through for me. But I did I, I did miss a little bit with Jones. You know he 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 had some good at bats, some tough calls. But uh, right there it was that was a good swing. That kid can hit Tucker. And you haven't seen him hit right-handed yet. No, he, I haven't. He's a little marginally better hitter left-handed but he is a legit switch hitter, switch hitter okay. at, at, at the highest levels of the game there's plenty of right-handed bat speed there too breaking ball skips in there trying to keep it out front ike irish is the catcher elijah green hits the number one player in the land elijah green a rocket single in his first at bat earlier tonight you remember his dad eric who played for a long time in the nfl a lot of that time at the pittsburgh steelers Elijah can play football for sure. Just now his focus is on baseball. A little bit more on Elijah Green. Let's bring Danny Wexelman back in. Hey, Danny. Hi, Darren. You mentioned his dad, Eric, and Eric is at every single event that Elijah goes to. He's always rocking a bucket hat, and Elijah told me his dad inspires him. He pushes him, and he told him, you never know who's watching him. And football Sundays, he said, there's a lot of screaming at the TV watching the Steelers. Good stuff, Danny, with so many great conversations with these athletes. Inside, 3-0 and the count. Well, that's a good breaking ball, David. It's got that, got that spin to it. 3,200-plus on the spin rate. And like we were talking about with Caden Dana before, it's a true over-the-top curveball. That almost looked like it was coming, coming back the other way. It had it was such 12-6 on it. Trying to find the strike zone, though. This is a big moment for this young man, and you can understand why the heart rate cranks up just a little bit. As that one misses high and in, and Green draws the walk. You know, getting to know the young man recently had him on our MLB Network radio show. Austin Henry, there is a lot to like. And again, very respectful, small-town approach for sure. Fell in love with Wichita State. Eric Wedge is his coach there. He loves that program. Oh yeah, he's a he's a phenomenal phenomenal guy to talk to. Talk about baseball. Talk about mentality. When I walk into a room, I'm ten foot tall and bulletproof. And uh, you know, Henry here, he definitely could have a Vidal Sassoon shampoo, hair conditioner kind of contract. He's got the, some good fluffy flow. That's a good mention by you, Hunter. Taking us back in time. I'll never forget that quote. It's a good it's a good mentality to have talking about Eric Wedge. That's the other radio property that we have. Hunter Pence and I host Perfect Game College Baseball every Tuesday night on ESPNU on Sirius XM at 10 o'clock Eastern every Tuesday night year round. Not just a seasonal show. Hunter's not in halfway folks. And Eric Wedge was one of our favorites. Yeah, Wedge is impressive, impressive guy. It's going to be awesome for any kid that goes and plays for him. Been looking for a good G form play of the game here. We, we might have found one with a couple of runners on out here as that one misses outside. Look, 
When you knock one over the wall, you're the G form play of the game. Guys, this is his home run earlier, Hunter. And that's just a sweet swing. Short to the ball, 3-2 count. Was looking for a fastball. Middle end. Didn't try to do too much. And uh, a lot of times that's when uh, you do a, a lot more. So that ball got out of here in a hurry and uh, got the East team started. Big exhale from Austin Henry. He bounces a breaking ball in there. David, he's having a tough time. He, he didn't have this battle at National, but he's it's a big stage in the strike zones elusive on him right now and it's it's something we we see a lot at, at pg showcases whether it's a small regional event or the biggest stage that we put out here and we have to acknowledge these are young men and they're nervous when they get out there and we're gonna have a little visit to the mound by manny hermosillo to calm down the right hander well he is a legendary coach folks allow us to introduce you to manny from montgomery high school in san diego california and we'll tell you about the rest of the squad Luis Lorenzana is on that squad as well from East Lake High School in San Diego. Rico Billups from Atlanta, who runs a great program there. A couple of them. Brett Kay from J. Sarah Catholic up in San Juan Capistrano, one of the strongest programs in the nation, all working under Gonzo on that staff. That's a, that's a coaching legend right there, though. So revered in Southern California down here in the San Diego area. Here's Ryan Clifford. Another chance for this talented young man, Ryan Clifford. Coach Hermosillo's words must have been soothing as Henry getting ahead in the count right away. So what is Henry when, when things are going right for him? What is he he's featuring the high fastball curveball? Yeah, it's 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 a curveball heavy approach. The fastball was up to ninety two, I believe, at, at PG National, but it's it's really the curveball that's his separator and you just Wonder back playing Legion ball in Del Rapids, South Dakota. What hitters think of that breaking ball back there? <laughs> He's fighting himself tonight, though. Man, it's such a bright future. There's so much to be excited about. Let's see if against Clifford he can find the strike zone as he wants. And, and that's really a difference between playing the Legion ball back in South Dakota and stuff versus going to the big tournaments, the WWBA 17 under. That's way way high in the air to right field heading into the corner and making the play out there that scores a run nice job just sticking with the trickling trickling Mari Boyd made that play in foul territory and Clifford scores a run drives one in nine to one keep adding on having good at bats opportunity to get an RBI here and get the ball in the air gets a fastball over the plate and Looks like he just got under it. He hit that ball. That's a big, big league sacrifice fly right there. And, uh, you know, RBI. It's a good at bat. So Roman Anthony now. And maybe a little bit of an exhale for this man on the mound. No matter the score. I mean, just trying to find that. Yikes. Breaking ball for a strike. Sometimes just that first out you get. Yeah, you, you want to get that slot and that timing. With those big curveballs, it's hard to get it in for a strike. And right there, he finally got that feel. He got the out. And hopefully now he can kind of click in the timing. Beat him with a fastball in. He knocked one over the boards the other night in the scrimmage early on. And uh, gosh, was it. It was fun to watch. There's a no doubt or two. Big ballpark at the University of San Diego. Beautiful facility. A couple years ago, there was a man by the name of Bryce Harpo who used to hit it on the buildings out there as a PG All-American. How about that, David? You wouldn't think to see it that somebody could hit the ball on the top of those dorms. No. Well, Bryce did just that. So Roman's in good club. That's in a good club. He's with good company there. That's a fastball. Jumps at the plate. There's that second out. I'm guessing he was thinking breaking ball there. We get to see Tamar hit one more time. Let's go, Mar. That's the one thing about, uh, you know, he, he seems to have the real four seam and then the, and then the curveball off of that working the top of the zone. But it's a real feel thing, and you have to really have command of it. So right there he's finally getting a little bit of his letting the, the high curveball come in for a strike and then playing the high fastball off of it to get the chase. Hammer dives low. My goodness. I mean, that's straight up and down as it gets, and it's sharp when it's right, but he's got to get the, a little bit of the command and the timing. This is going to be a good at-bat right here to watch. Yeah. 
Boom, a good breaking ball, good fastball. One and one the count. Austin Henry out of Del Rapids, South Dakota. Mid South prospects. And here post 307, his Legion team. There are so many times we've said that Canes travel team tonight. They're such a power. They do such a great job. You can count a half dozen playing in this game. Not more as that one's fouled off, but it but it is fun to to still mention a a Legion guy on occasion. Oh yes, definitely definitely fun there. We saw our first change up. Pretty good one. From, yeah, pretty good. They got uh, Tamar way out front, dribbled it foul. 82 miles an hour on the velocity. One and two the count. Oh, I thought he was going to throw him a breaking ball. Pence, I thought he was going to throw him one. I feel like Jamar needs to check his bat. It looked like something went flying off of it on that changeup. Uh -oh. But uh, he see, I think it's, he, see, he acts like it's fine. Oh, good take. We had a chance to talk with one of the great spin rate guys of all time at a PG event, Carter Stewart, the other day, who's a couple of years into pro ball now in Japan. Signed a long-term deal there after having things not work out, being picked very high by the Braves, then going the junior college route. He's a, he loves it over there. He loved this event, too. He really has vivid memories of this. So that one sails high. It's ball four. It's a remarkable job right there by Irish to keep that ball in his glove. That's a that's an athletic move, but good at bat once again by Termar Johnson. He seems to just find a way to get things done every time he goes up to the plate. Here's Jared Jones. You think what a big moment it is for a guy like Austin Henry is. Other Jack is watching, Maddie Sis, who's 12, Ryan, who's 8. A big night for the E squad. Pretty good pitch, just a little bit low. Jared's been a, kind of involved in all of it. Yeah, he has. He's been, you know, throwing some people out. He's gotten a couple knocks, snuck in a to home plate on a good play. You know, showed off the wheels a little bit. Challenged him with a fastball. It was a good reminder that shot we had just a moment ago. Pence and I are gonna drive through and grab some tacos on the way home. <laughs> Sounds great. I could go for some tacos. Mini tacos. Jack in the box. Two and one. Two and two the count. Oppo tacos? <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll see what happens in the next inning if there will be an Oppo taco because that would be run number two and hit number one for the West team. Yeah, one is the loneliest number. Right now, zero is very lonely. <laughs> two and two the count. There's that good breaking ball. Jones, bear out of Marietta, Georgia, rolls that one foul. I kind of like what he did here, and it was really quick. He was looking fastball, and then you saw him recognize the changeup, and he kind of kicked his back foot to get in position to hit it. Two balls and two strikes to count. Got him to chase a fastball up and out of the zone. In the meantime, the West squad seeking their first hit in this game as the squad from the East in the Perfect Game All-American Classic tossing a no-hitter. What?
2021 Perfect Game All-American Classic is brought to you by Diamond Kinetics, proud sponsor of Perfect Game Swing Tracker Bat Sensor and Pitch Tracker Smart Ball, the most precise, data-driven player development tools in the game. DK, get the gear, get better, get noticed. Diamond Kinetics by Rawlings, the number one glove of pro players and the official baseball glove of Major League Baseball and by Perfect Game, the largest and most respected independent scouting service in baseball. Petco Park. Perfect game, All-American Classic. The West looking for their first hit. The East tossing a no-hitter. And Tommy Specht gets an opportunity to hit. And Iowan. Tommy drives that one off the end of the bat into right field. Run down with a slide. The play is made out there. Oh, baby, he came up with it. Look at Ryan Clifford keep that no-no alive. I thought you got him. I thought you got him, but... Clifford comes in and just robs him of a nice little blooper. Uh, line drive over here. Let's see this. Let's see it. Let's see him make determination drive. And he's probably staring into the lights, but he makes the play. Smooth operator. Yeah, it's such a hard play when you think the ball was driven. I thought it was driven off the bat as well, but right off the end of the bat. We're only going to see Jacob Miller for one, actually one pitch this inning. One pitch, one out, and he will... Uh, be finished with his night. I guess we're going to bring in the, the closer right now. Big Riley Stanford. Riley Stanford, the Georgia Bombers. Riley Stanford. Hey, by the way, want to mention Tommy Specht out of Dubuque, Iowa. And this talented East Coast Sox Kentucky commit. Specht is fist bumps and high fives. Welcome Riley Stanford to the mound. But I'd be remiss if I didn't point out Specht. Perfect game, born in Iowa. And this is an Iowa player in Tommy Specht. And a talented All-State baseball player. He just went after the first pitch, unfortunately, Tommy. We didn't get to talk about you much, but a five-tool player. Tommy Specht, again, part of this Perfect Game All-American Classic. And have enjoyed getting to know him this week. Riley Stanford, Gainesville, Georgia. We've seen him with the bat in his hands already. This is kind of a big fella that does a lot of damage. Bat and arm. And arm. What, what, what are we seeing as a pitcher, D? Yeah, you, it's a power approach. There's no doubt about it. You can look at him just warming up for the inning there. That's kind of a reliever profile uh, delivery, and it's just big heat, mid, mid to upper 90s fastball, power slider, nothing fancy about it. Maybe the fanciest part is that leg recoil is he after he release. But, yeah, he's, he's going to bring the heat and challenge these West hitters for the last two outs. Hey, don't forget, by the way, to download the MLB app to get in-game video highlights, live pitch-by-pitch, pitch, breaking news, player updates, stat leaderboards, and more for your favorite team and the rest of the league. The MLB app. The Dodgers fan, pick the Dodgers. You have the little icon on your phone. If you're a Giants fan, pick the Giants. That icon will be right there. The MLB app. All right, the big fella with the no-hitter alive, Pence. What's that? Well, you gave me permission to talk. <laughs> you gave me permission to actually be a broadcaster in the last inning. I appreciate it. <laughs> I gave it. you permission? <laughs> Mr. Award-winning There's broadcaster. There's no awards in my home. Uh, you know, Linscombe pitched the only no-hitter in Petco Park history on July 13, 2013. To 150, I don't remember exactly how many, but it was pretty impressive. So we'll see if the East can close out this thing that's happening where they haven't necessarily gotten one of those things. In okay. The <laughs> okay. But th you know what? He looks like a closer to me. Definitely has closer-ish mentalities. First pitch, sinking, ground ball. Malcolm Moore puts it on the ground. The Stanford commit and the talented catcher. That's turned into the second out of the inning. By the way, that no-hitter that Hunter was talking about, thrown by Lincecum, Hunter saved it in the eighth inning with a diving play in center field. So you were the Ryan Clifford of that I game. Did, I did my best Clifford impression. By the way, we're also looking at another major league record. We're looking at a potential and probably a PG All-American record, uh, three-pitch inning. And there's a chance for it. There is a chance ah. for it. Of course, we also, we, being broken. we also have a potential 10-pitcher no-hitter here, which even in today's <laughs> big league baseball. Probably some kind of record somewhere, yeah. maybe. Hey, David Horn, I'm glad you got a chance to hit. He's out of Murray out of California. Plays a, the deep and talented Jay Sarah for Brett K. He's a San Diego show guy and the son of Patricia and Dave. And this is a two-way guy, David Ronsley. Obviously a, a great talent. Has played varsity basketball in high school as well. 
He can hit and he can pitch. And I'm glad to see him getting a chance to hit here as he pops that one foul because he was scheduled to pitch on Friday. That's he's a primary pitcher. We've seen him up to 94, big curveball, uh, but was unable to pitch on Friday. So it's nice to see him get a chance to hit tonight and get out on the field. And the East dugout a little louder right now than the West they dugout. They are, they are. That one misses down and away. Here's the thing is when these players all go to college and see each other again, they're going to hear about this for a while. So you're going to you're really rooting actually over there on the west side to get a hit right here. David Horn, a recent Vanderbilt commit, takes a pitch that is high. Makes that catcher's mitt off of young Brady Neal. And he's got a million dollar smile underneath that mask. Let's see if David can break it up. Out of Mission Viejo area. Here's the pitch. Horn fouls it off, three and two the count. Trying to win the, it, this game has been owned by the West the last decade. But the tide has turned. David David said the East was the favorite. Yeah, on paper, but it never works out that way. You know baseball's not played on paper, but you know, it's just a phenomenal class of talent from the East, and they've definitely had the upper hand tonight. Three and two the count. Into the catcher's mitt. The East wins the perfect game All-American Classic, and they do it with a no-hitter in this legendary game. Let the celebration begin. It's a no-hitter. Talk about emotion. Let's play some ball. <laughs> Look at him going crazy out there, TikToking everywhere. You got to have it. <laughs> and that's, this is the kind of emotion that all these players showed all week, you know, all the last three days. So it, it's fun to see the game end that way. You know, it's an emotional group of people. I expect to see the West team out there. Maybe taking a, a quick little walk out there to congratulate them, though. Ten East pitchers combined for that no-hitter. Lesko, Ferris, Smith, Barry, Aradena, Mule, St. Jude, Murphy, Miller, and Stanford. A no-hitter for the East squad. One more time. Here is the final pitch of this game from the big fella, Riley Stanford. I wonder if he's checking the miles per hour right there or if he's checking to make sure there was no hits. They got a run, but no hits, and he is pumped, and the East is excited. That's good baseball right there. What a heck of a performance by East and all of, all of the talent out here today. Uh, pretty good hacks, good at bats, and good work and showcasing that talent there. Now they're celebrating out there. They've got to send their MVP back in, whoever the MVP of this game is, because we've got a big moment here. Dusty Jaquins of Top Chops is down. Trevor Hoffman, our great host, the Hall of Famer, is down. I know Danny's not too far away. And what an incredible contest that was tonight. I'm thinking it's got to be Luke Heyman. He homered in this game. And so certainly... Uh, Oh, what a, what a lot of fun this was. I mean, it really, really was. There's a, some pictures. As Hunter said, they're TikToking. They're dancing. They're having fun. Heyman headed to Florida. He homered in this game. Spectacular. Homers are definitely MVP worthy, but so is no-hit baseball. But it's tough to pick one pitcher when they all kind of they all contributed. Yeah. Danny Wexelman standing by. She's going to have a conversation with the MVP. Dusty Jaquins of Top guys. Chops is with her. Trevor Hoffman as well. Danny, take it away. Darren, thank you so much. I have Hall of Famer Trevor Hoffman here, as well as Top Chops CEO Dusty Jenkins here to present Luke Heyman with the MVP award for the East team. All right, Luke, the last time the East team won this was 2015. The last time there was a no-hitter in the All-American Classic, never. A Gatorade bath, well-deserved for that. So as I was saying, 2015 was the last time East won. There has never been a no-hitter at the perfect game, All-American Classic. You caught three pitchers in this game. How special is this East team? Um, we got a bunch of talent, and it's just 
fun to come out here and play with these players. You know, um, East Coast better than the West Coast. Did you realize what was happening in this game? Because I think everyone was talking about it in the dugout. Yeah, I actually did say something about it, and they kind of hated me for a little bit, but it doesn't matter. We still got the no-hitter. You told me in July that you've been working on your timing and going gap to gap. You hit an early two-run home run in this game. So mullet magic, how proud are you of your hitting? Um, um, it's just exciting that I be able to play in this stadium and play with the best players and happy that and blessed that I could be able to do that. So thank you. And lastly, but most importantly, more than $108,000 raised between both teams for Rady Children's Hospital. Why is that part of this game the most impactful? Um, yeah, that's the whole purpose of the game. You know, you get to help out the kids that are less fortunate and wish that they could be in our shoes. So it's good to give back to them and see the smiles on their face. Can we see the mullet one more time? There it is. Luke, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Darren, back to you. Oh, Danny, great interview, great stuff. Thank you very much. Oh, that mullet. Oh, that mullet. Well, we had a lot of fun. Hunter Pence, David Ronsley, Darren Sutton. We were honored to be a part of telling the stories of these athletes. It's always a thrill. Hunter, this is the first time you've done this game with us. What's your takeaway? These kids can pump some cheddar. They got some nasty stuff. These guys have great at bats, but that was one beautiful mullet to say, hey, kid. <laughs> what do you think, David, what well, you saw tonight? I said at the start of the broadcast that this 2022 class was going to be the class of the high school pitcher. The draft is going to be oriented on that. And, boy, did we see that out there today, not just with the East pitchers, but the West pitchers as well. I'm going to go a little bit sappier and deeper. This, this whole group went through a pandemic. They lost their high school season. They didn't play at all last year. They had to recreate themselves. This class is, and, and along with, with this year's draft class, has always been my favorite class. So I, I'm excited about this class. I'm excited with all they went through, the work that they went through. These are, I'm blown away with how great a student they are. I'm blown away with how much they give back to the community. So um, it was just great. You did a heck of a job, Pence. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you, Darren. Will Thank you do you more with us? Oh, I would love to. I Thank you all for having me. These kids have such great personalities. We saw 100 miles an hour today. You don't see that every day at a big league game. 100 and a no-hitter. That'll do it for us here at Petco Park in San Diego in the 19th Annual Perfect Game All-American Classic. We congratulate every single player who was here this weekend. We cannot wait to see what you do next. Hunter Pence, David Ronsley, Danny Wexelman, and our entire PG crew. I'm Darren Sutton saying thanks for watching. Now let's send you back east. It's time for Quick Pitch on the MLB Network. Gosh, this was fun again.